Achievers to your new designed Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of May 25th, 2023. I'm morning host Elijah sitting with me, someone very special to me, of course, Emmett Watkins Jr. of many things. Howdy, Players howdy. Club. Um, Spoonful. Let's see if I can name almost everything you do because you do Ooh. a lot of BGU TV. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. And, uh, uh, well. I always forget this one. Uh, it's something thing. Yeah. Do the do the thing. No, it's not that. It's it's like we were introducing you to the thing. What's or... the thing? What's the thing? Thank you. Ooh, ooh you got no. W. You got W. What's whoa, 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 it's well? Not what's the thing? Like I'm introducing you to the thing, or I'm giving you a greeting to the thing. <laughs> what is happening? Like you're coming into the thing, and I am blanking you Welcome into to the, the thing. Th- there you go. There you go. There you go. I was a hundred percent positive it was the thing or whatever i just said what's the thing <laughs> what's the thing i i was like oh, i'm done what's the thing and you kept what's the talking thing i was like, like a... you didn't hear me i have to re say <laughs> what's the thing that's what it was that's what you're on nah what's the thing is uh that sounds like a 90s game show <laughs> that's yeah, on that's, nickelodeon gas <laughs> that's the answer to a jeopardy question <laughs> exactly what I, is the thing how are you my friend uh i am doing pretty great uh very excited to talk about all the stuff in this episode because boy howdy we had a news day yesterday and also i'm gonna repeat the bit because i had to do this yes, on the last time we had um, to do this twice because of this issues. episode is sponsored by the cheetah the cheetah gentleman's club uh from in atlanta, atlanta. Uh, i've yeah. been there twice i was explaining how i've been to the strip club twice <laughs> now i guess this answers the question itself you since it, of course we're sponsored by it um do you enjoyed your time you recommend the gentleman's club I enjoyed my time. I would recommend it, but I have been to other strip clubs since now, and I oh. don't know if I recommend it as much. It's not that it's any worse than it was. It's more so it it's a gentleman's club rather than a strip club. So it's very formal. There are rules. There are <laughs> oh, you want you want you want the girls to get close to you, you gotta go into the VIP section. It costs money to sit in the VIP section. And you can't touch them if they're dancing on the table or whatever. Like, it's very rigid at how it goes. A couple of months ago for Valentine's Day, me, my girl, and some other friends went to King of Diamonds. They they don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. We, we asked them, how much for a table dance? They're like, just ask. And then they just got on the fucking table. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, different you vibes. The dichotomy of strip clubs. Now, mm-hmm. you're going to these gentlemen clubs much more often now. Have you ever thought about being called Emmett the Gentleman Watkins Jr.? Emmett's the gentleman walking junior. I look, my name already got three parts. <laughs> <laughs> see, he, I feel like you can like, I, I can see that on a neon sign. I feel like the gentleman part cancels out the junior part mm. in the same way where at some point, like Lil Wayne is still Lil Wayne, even though he's like fucking almost 50. He's but like, like 50. a lot of rappers will drop the Lil, like Lil Bow Wow. He's just Bow Wow now. Really? That's he's true. just, I never thought about that. Just, he is Bow Wow now. Mm hmm. Yeah, and honestly, he's Shade Moss now. He ain't been rapping for a while, but he is just Bow Wow if you talk about his name. Other rappers do that, too. I just can't think of others off the bat. That's kind of what the junior is on my name. Is Little but Dickie like, still I Little like Dickie, or is he just Dickie now? He's Dave. Because <laughs> mm, okay. the show's he's called Dave. Dave. I'm sure he still goes by Little Dickie, but Dave. that's He has a show called Dave at this point. Like, What else are we going to do? Um so yeah, that's kind of what the junior is on my name, except I don't feel a reason to take it off. Really, I only had it there. So Emmett Watkins is my dad's name. So mm, keep yeah, the junior sense. on there for that sake. Of but yeah, it's good otherwise, good otherwise. Um, but to answer your question, uh, I'll say I'm not even going to strip clubs that often. I just went to one a couple months ago, and that's not, about it. But you can make this a part of your identity. I feel like you're leaving a lot of money on the table here. You can, you can really lean in. <laughs> 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 I was keeping it straight until you said that. I mean, you can really lean into this thing. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't. I'll, you know what? I'll make it part of my identity if my girlfriend wants to go half and half on that. And okay. it's both of our identities. Then we could be like the script club couple. The gentleman and the lady. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, we could do something like that, maybe. But like, I'm not trying to be like, hey, guys, you know me as a avid you, strip club enjoyer. You know me. <laughs> God. I, of the strip clubs. It took way too many mental barriers for me to go to the strip club the first time for me to make that my personality now. So <laughs> I want to go to one once, but it, it was I'm in your ballpark where I would have to really, re- I mean, that's really coming out of a shell because that's just mm-hmm. something that just seems so 
awkward isn't the right word, but like uh, uncomfortable. Unnatural. Maybe, isn't yeah, it's know. unnatural to my social cues. Yeah. Like that's the whole the holdup I had. It's like you want me to go to a place and just look at women on mm -hmm. purpose the whole time. That seems wrong. And they're fine um, with it. It yeah like a, yeah it's like a prank <laughs> exactly exactly and it, it's just not natural for me at all but at some point it's like yeah i have to just understand they're fine with it and then once you once you really take that into heart and it's like all right whatever we're just people watching that's all it is and come with friends because you're there alone that's what makes it super weird yeah 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 you definitely want to come with people so it's less exactly. less like you you're like coming in and you can't be disheveled you have to you have to look nice yeah regardless of the look film, reasonable. You, can't, you can't be walking in with like messy hair like a hat, like a shirt that's like mm -hmm. like like uh, you know like all messy and then you gotta have you know iron your basketball there. shorts basketball, yep, basketball shorts. shorts i know a you lot can't of do all that. do that for obvious reasons but you can't, yeah. you can't be doing that can't be doing that indeed indeed and i, I watch swarm I, I know how it goes i think we had something <laughs> to talk about um, that's right I, oh my god uh playstation showcase happened yesterday uh we will be doing the show a little different we will be doing that first and then we will be doing the regular show after that, not so rapid fire, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to jump just right into the showcase. We're just going to be talking about it, uh, dissecting it, analyzing it from all points of view. And then we'll just go to the normal show. But first, Emmett, we watched the yeah. showcase. You did this. Uh, you have a reacts, I believe, on your channel that people can go check out if they'd like to. Uh, yeah, it should be up there pretty soon. I haven't uploaded it yet, okay, but it should right. be up there. It's at it, least in the Twitch archive. Face. Okay. It's so at least in the Twitch archive on EJ Spun 61 underscore is my twitch you check there you'll see it but i'm gonna put it on the youtube channel for vg pretty soon okay well so it's not ready at all but you can go check it on twitch spots <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but what what is your first first thoughts i guess what what was what is your first thing before we start really Ooh. analyzing in this my first impression well not first because the next day at this point it's not the first but, impression but what is what yeah. is something you're gonna get out before we really dive in my general impressions of it is it is a mid conference. It is, and it's not because the content was bad. I actually think this was a lot of great content, a lot of great games, a lot of new games I had never seen before, a lot of interesting IP, a lot of, you know, exciting revivals. But we expected to see just, <clears throat> excuse me, we expected to see reveal after reveal of the big hitters. When we talk about the big hitters, when we talk about PlayStation, we're talking about what's the next third person cinematic adventure game. What's the next, you know, what's Naughty Dog doing? What's Sucker Punch doing? What's Blue Point doing? What, what's Sony Ben doing? All these folks that haven't said anything or put anything out in a couple of years. That's what we expected to see. We didn't see any of that. The only thing we saw in that realm of game was Spider-Man 2, and we knew we were going to see that. We knew that was coming. So it was a little bit disappointing that the only PlayStation Studios games that we saw were the live service ones and were just CGI trailers with no gameplay. <laughs> so it, with the exception of Helldivers 2, that I'm very excited about. But um, overall, the conference was it was good for what it was. It, it was good for the content within. But when you call it a PlayStation showcase, there's expectations there and it did not live up to those expectations at all. So, you know, a solid like 7.5 out of 10, if you ask me. But just didn't quite it should have been a nine or ten out of ten i think you had tweet of the night if i'm being frank between everything i saw between hmm. everyone talking about everything yeah i think you had the best uh pretty much reaction to it you tweeted out this was the best state of play ever and that is pretty much what this feels like this feels like a very polished a very good state of play this is not a playstation showcase we've had uh if you just go back i mean you can go back to any year it, any of them kind of pretty much blow this out of the water in terms of unexpected things at the time and just sheer quality of the games that were showed. Um, I guess not every yep. year that that's not quite true, I guess in terms of specifically quality, but a lot of the, but a lot of the years, especially things like 2016 is something that everyone always brings up in terms of like how good that was. But this, this was barely, you could barely call this a, a PlayStation showcase. This was, this was pretty much everything yeah. except it just in just name. I thought it was very. I actually tweeted out, "This is good," but that's the problem. It's like shockingly <laughs> good. I thought this was. I thought this was one for the history books. I really thought they were gonna come out and really show you why you need a PlayStation in the next half of its life cycle. Exactly. And they didn't really do any of that. They just kind of 
showed you Spider-Man 2. We are, like you said, we already knew we were going to see that. They did the cardinal sin of showing it at the end. So, like, you're not surprised by anything, and you're just going out on, like, a... That was good, but I knew I was going to see it. Uh, Pretty much, if we're talking specifically about what this says, this is a PlayStation showcase. We saw Haven. We saw Helldivers 2, which is a second party. You could barely count them. Um, That's also yeah. launching on PC, so it's not an exclusive. Uh, Let's see here. Um... I have to really scroll down in this entire mm-hmm. write-up. I have it's a to lot. really find something. Because uh, even the games you would think are exclusive, a lot of those are like, nah, we're going to be on Xbox, or at least just PC only, or as and, well. And then first party in major quotes, Bungie. But they're, I mean, are they? Are they not? Not really. No. They can kind of still do fa- whatever they want. So they're not I mean, really... Marathon's coming to Xbox. I wouldn't it even is. count them. Yeah, so we don't even count that. <laughs> and then we have Firewalk Studios, which they... I believe just purchased um, mm-hmm. within the last couple months, if I remember right. Yeah. And then we have, for some reason, they showed Gran Turismo uh, movie uh, thing. I literally just wrote I, Gran Turismo yeah. and just blacked out. I don't even remember what they showed, if I'm being honest. It was just a trailer that they already revealed a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Jesus. And, then, and, and it makes business sense to show this, but it doesn't make it not good. Uh, revealed mm-hmm. the, the earbuds the project nomad and the project q we've known about that for a long time so i guess you could count that as like an exclusive spider-man 2 i just named like four or five things that were literally just for playstation that upon doing a bunch of this research a lot of these games are playstation and pc a lot of them a i will lot. say you didn't say one big important one what foam is- star <laughs> oh my god that's right that's an exclusive i forgot about that i can't believe i i <laughs> we're gonna get into that it is clear as day. This is one of this is just like forespoken. We're like, why are you guys? Why did you guys make a marketing deal? And I think it's clear as day. Square said, if you want Final Fantasy, uh, if you want both, Final some Fantasies, other bullshit. You're taking this other garbage that we have to get like release and get rid of because it's not. No one's gonna care otherwise. I think that's obvious now. That there's no way someone at high up said get foam stars. This is zero chance. <laughs> Zero. So I think that's obvious that that's what happened. They had these things like we have we have four spoke and we got form stars. There might even be something else that like, hey, we need a marketing deal for them. You want Final Fantasy? You got to take these two. And they did. And mm. wow. I mean, that is that that is really though. That was like peak awful. <laughs> like how bad that looks like a bad game. Unfortunately, that the, the, as soon as the gameplay was shown, my eyes started bleeding with how bright and terrible it looked. It like looks like a Splatoon, but with like it's such a blatant Splatoon knockoff, and it doesn't even look good. Like if you're gonna knock it off, at least knock it off well. I'll it it's hilarious because side note, everyone has seen the Gollum reviews came out today, Lord of the Rings Gollum, and yes. it's getting horrible reviews. And I've already had one friend joke. Ah, oh, it's getting bad reviews, so that must mean it's going to be MS Game of the Year. I say that to say this. I thought Foam Stars looked kind of cool. <laughs> oh, no, Emin. Oh, my God. I, this is why I love you, because you say things that I just can't imagine. Um, But, uh, yeah, I, I... Yeah, that's just one of the It looks things. like Rocket Arena, and I liked Rocket Arena a lot, so yeah, I'll try it. I guess If it's free to play, I'll try it. If it costs money, yeah, it's going to don the vibe. I think, I don't think it... I didn't say anything. I didn't see anything with free to play. We'll go when we get to it. I'll look it up. Um, but aside from that, that was that's my quick quick thing. This was good, but we weren't expecting good. I mean, really, let's really think about. It. I know hindsight is it's hard to think about this, but prior to this thing, we thought we'd see Sony Bend. We thought there was mm-hmm. a potential Naughty Dog appearance, which where's factions? I guess that's gonna be at Jeff Keighley's thing. Which why would it's you fucking do better that? Be. Why? But why would you do that? I saw people saying. Uh, that they might save that for Jeff Keighley thing. Why? Who cares? With Je- the, it's not on Sony to make Jeff Keighley stuff look good. This is where you got all your PlayStation people at. Why do you care to show it up Jeff Keighley's thing? I love Jeff Keighley. This isn't a slight against him. I'm just saying, why would you hold it? Show it here so people have a much better reaction to it. You already have well, like- your name stamped on this and it says showcase. You want to save everything for it. So if it shows at anywhere else, that's I. it might be, it makes this worse because they could have shown it here. 
if anything, I would have shown the Haven trailer at Keeley's thing, or I would have shown the Firewalk Studios thing at Keeley's because that's exact, absolutely the type of tier of stuff he usually gets. Like big stuff in concept, but things don't don't excite you in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why we didn't see that. So yeah, I agree with you. It was very much, it was middling because our expectations were so high because they used that name. You can't use they that name it. and not they give us it. that. Been, and it's been a year and a half, a mm -hmm. year and a half. You've been so quiet, so we were really excited. We really thought we'd see everything, and we saw almost nothing. I mean, really, almost nothing in terms of anything with substance. But Absolutely. we're we're going around it. Let's just jump into the showcase. So we uh, they opened with fair games. This is by Haven. This is another. I again, it looks cool, but this is one of those things where no gameplay. I can't get hyped. I'm sorry. Like if you don't show me what the game looks like, I can't. I don't really care. It looked cool. But I can only get so excited about a CG trailer. And I will say, all the way back in an Xbox showcase that you yourself was on, Emmett, I don't know if you remember this, mm. I got the most excited I ever got for a CGI trailer. What was that game? Redfall. It was ah. Redfall. Ah. Ah. Look how ah. that happened. Look uh. what happened. Look yeah. what happened. I broke my rule. I said it on that show. I'm breaking my rule. I'm incredibly excited for Redfall, and look what happened. So, with that Oof. mindset, I can only get so excited for this. Yeah. I, I will say Fair Games, it, it does look interesting. Uh, I remember when I was reacting to it, it, it just gave me the biggest Watchdog 2 vibe ever. Um, Wait, but I, I also I pause. It shares a game director, not to cut you off. I, that's, I think Ooh. that's why. I believe, I believe okay. it, a game director. Um, I'll look that up while you while you stalk. Yeah, if that's the case, then yeah, I I can absolutely see it. I wasn't expecting this game because ha Haven has always been talking very ethereally about its game, like God, oh, it's gonna change the fucking world and all that stuff. So I didn't expect it to be so grounded in reality. I they were talking like they're making some like some super duper innovative game, and Fair Games could be you know super innovative, but that trailer seems very steeped in tropes that I'm already familiar with. So I don't know about that. The fact that this is supposed to be like a multiplayer heist game. It's not that I think it'll be bad. It's that I don't think I will be in line for the multiplayer heist game. I don't play GTA online right now. So, you know, it is what it is there. But hopefully it ends up being good. EGI trailers are uh, whatever. But and also, yes, it's a lot like Watch Dogs 2. There aren't many games that have a similar tone to Watch Dogs 2. Um, hopefully it's more two than one or Legion. I'm very oh hoping for that. Um, yeah, hopefully it's not going to take itself super seriously, but, uh, I look forward to seeing what this game is, but there, you're, you're, you can only get excited. You can only get so excited because of the CGI. I can only get so excited because I know this is a games of service. So I need to see where the other shoe is going to drop for that. So there we are on that. Of course, this is Jade Raymond as well, her studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and as we'll recall, she was looking to innovate the way games are made with, very cloud-based kind of technology uh so let's i'll be curious to see if that changes how this game is made or works or uh anything because they they were uh, con uh not contracted i'm sorry brought on a lot of engineering i mean and i mean a lot especially mm -hmm. in the early days of their studio so we could see something major from them in terms of something cloud-based that maybe pushes this medium forward i don't know uh, but I mean, we could we, unless they go for a early access type of release. We we don't see this probably till twenty twenty five at the earliest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking so. I I don't think this thing's gonna come out soon. But I think because they spent so much money on the engineering early on, maybe they're actually gonna do something in the back end that's fascinating. But I don't know. I can only say so much from CGI. So we'll see. We shall see. And it, they did show a game director, but I can't find his name. But they do. So that's why it looks so much like yeah. it. I mean, it looked, I was like, is this Watch Dogs? I was like, is this Watch Dogs? <laughs> like, what's going on here? Uh, next up, we have Helldivers 2. This is, of course, by Airhead mm. Studios. This is PS5 and PC coming out this year at some time. Uh, this was leaked in two ways, both the NVIDIA, uh, the one of the biggest le uh, leaks of all time, and also a trailer just leaked for this game as well, although it doesn't look like any of that was in this, if I remember right. It didn't, didn't look like mm. it. Maybe it was in a couple frames, but... Uh, Helldivers 2. This looks cool. They changed up the game quite a bit. First off, it looks a lot more polished than I would say the original game was on Vita and uh, was it PS4 as well? PS3, PS4, was, PS3, was, and Vita. Yeah, so all three. It looks very good um, when you compare those two. 
uh, at the times they were released and the different kind of perspective they have i saw a lot of people saying like oh they did like the risk of rain thing we're like oh now it's top down well now it's like over the shoulder kind of thing so it looks very cool mm-hmm. i will try it's it it, it looks like hell divers it's it pretty much the same it's just his third person now it looks looks cool i can't wait to try it with a couple buddies yeah I, i'm right there with you i, I really want to try this one out I, i'm hoping that because if it's coming out this year great there's too many games coming out this year let this be on playstation plus or something because I, I need a break plus, i need a really break nice. Exactly. Um, but yeah, looking at the gameplay, it gave me big Lost Planet 2 vibes in the best way. It did. Just because it's just these heavy, clunking steel tanks walking around with their guns. And it seems like in the first Helldivers, there was a lot of like players having to work together to do simple tasks. Like, oh, we need to call in an ammo cache. Well, then we all need to hit the button combination in order to drop this thing. Um, it's a lot of teamwork. It's a lot of, oh, you need to be healed. I got to go up to your body and input a bunch of buttons to heal you. Yeah. Like, it's very analog in that way. And it seems like they're carrying some of that over with some of the clips of gameplay here. Um, I hope so, because I think that's, what, that's what's going to really make this stick out. And also the big heavy clunkiness and feel of it. We haven't had a game like Lost Planet 2 in a very long time. Uh, the closest we might have is something like uh, what is it? Deep, Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah, um, that's true. So, yeah. if it can give vibes of either of those two, I'm all for it. I love both of those games. So, yeah, I'm excited to give this one a shot. Very good trailer. It reminds me of Outer Worlds too, where it was very funny. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was thinking more so Super Troopers. That's just Super Troopers to a T. Yeah, that whole trailer. Yeah, yeah. That, I actually thought it much, was originally. It probably yeah, it very much was inspired by Super Troopers. Uh, so that is clear that was that. I have nothing else to add. Are you ready to move on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's Immortals of Avium. This is by Ascended mm-hmm. Studios. This looks cool. Uh, magic based combat, it looks like. Looks like you're going very fast. Maybe Doctor Strange esque in appearance. I am not super excited only because it just doesn't. I don't know. Like, they show me gameplay. It looks cool, but it. It looks so flashy. I'm like, I want to play that or or at least see it. Like, it's hard to read I... what I'm doing. Yeah, like, and that's going to actually going to be the uh, two games from now, a similar thing where I, I, I feel like I really need to see a demo or someone really play this to really know what, like, the combat is because it looks like they got the coolest stuff and, and showed it to me. So, uh, skepticism, mm-hmm. I guess, is what I'll say about this, but I want to try it. Yeah, I'll say that I did listen to a little bit of the design about this game. Basically, their whole concept was, hey, we want to make a Call of Duty campaign, but with, like, magic. And it's a fun idea. I like most of the Call of Duty campaigns, so, you know, that'll be a fun thing to run through. I'm sure this game will be fun once I get around to playing it. But like you said, looking at this gameplay, it just looks all flash. And I'm just like, where? I don't see what my button inputs would be doing. Like, I couldn't tell you how that game is supposed to play from looking at gameplay, which concerns me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Plus, it's 70 bucks at at release. And I got to hoard my money nowadays. So um, I don't know. I'm interested in it. But I think it's going to be in a year when it comes to EA Play slash Game Pass. That might be the time I actually try it out. I did did forget this is an EA original. So. That is mm-hmm. there. We keep the IP, but you'll fund. We'll fund your game, kind of situation. So, bingo. Next up, Ghost Runner Two. This is by One More Level and Five Hundred Five Games, of course, publishing, and this comes out sometime this year. It looks awesome. I did not play the first one, but I did the thing where I heard it was really good. I heard it was thirty minutes. I just didn't really. Although it's such a little <laughs> amount of time, I didn't feel like wasting the time. If that makes sense. Uh, yeah. It, it looked great. It looks, and this one looks great as well. I'd be curious if this is a similar situation, where it's. Also, just very short. I'm going to look that up actually real quick. What did you think? Um, Look, I, I also played the first or I played the first Ghost Runner, but I also fell off of it very early. Uh, it just got difficult. And I was like, uh, I don't feel like getting frustrated right now. So I hopped off. But Ghost Runner 2 looks cool. Uh, I like the little motorcycle mechanic. It seems like they're going to let you ride that a little bit. Um, And more Ghost Runner is always good. That's absolutely, you know, it's a great game. I will say this is the point of the showcase where I was like, Ghost Runner 2 feels like a really good state of play announcement. Mm-hmm. It doesn't feel like it feels like if you're going to have it in a showcase, that's really good filler. But little did I know, all of the announcements are gonna be know. on the tier. <laughs> we're gonna be on the tier of a Ghost Runner 2. So it was this yeah. moment where I was like, okay, that's really good. 
where's Naughty Dog? Where's all these other folks? Oh, so, oh, oh, yeah. We're getting to the point where I went, this is not what we expected. And, and it's coming mm-hmm. up here soon. Um, but next up, we have Phantom Blade Zero uh, Ooh, by yeah. S Game. It's coming to PS5. This looked mm-hmm. awesome, but I have to say, I, I this is this is the giant uh example of like a I I need to play that that the I I do not mm-hmm. believe I'm doing half of that <laughs> like the, I want to see what I'm doing and what's like a initiate a combo thing that does it for you or something I don't know it just did yeah. not look like if you're on sticks a lot of that is happening especially the carriage scene where he like kicks one person and like stabs another guy and like are, am I yeah. really doing that i highly doubt it so i assume that's like a counter button and then you like kill everyone i don't know but this is another one where i'm like i don't believe that's what someone's doing but maybe maybe it is we'll have to see i'll say there's another one or not another one but this is one where i had ooh, this trailer starts oh is this a new castlevania oh is this a new bloodborne oh is this a new neo just the entire trailer i just kept asking that question and uh turns out it's a not actually even a new IP. The developer actually made a lot of Phantom Blades on mobile, and this is their first console yes. go at the franchise. And a Chinese um, developer is important to know. Yeah, that that is true as well. Um, so it looks interesting. It looks like it could be fun. It looks way more faster paced than all these Souls likes out there. So perhaps I'll give it a shot. But I'm with you. Like some of these sequences, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what buttons I'm hitting to make that happen. So let me see the sticks, and then we'll see about the game itself. If I may, I'm going to read a couple of snippets. What's your plan mm-hmm. knowing you only have 66 days to live? That's kind of the theming around this. And then um, the, he pretty much goes on to talk about, uh, I believe this is the founder of the studio, uh, where Rainblood Town of Death was an indie game this person made back in 2010. The development process was a creative outlet for me as an architecture student, first in Beijing and later in New Haven. Uh, and then he, when he returns to China, he finds S Games. And Rainblood grew into a franchise that would later become Phantom Blade. Most of these titles were for smartphones, like you said, and were never released outside of China. But we still managed to build a fan base of over 20 million players. And then Mm. they go on, and he names it Kung Fu Punk. Phantom World, Mm. the universe in which the game is set, is a place where many kinds of powers converge. Where you'll find Chinese Kung Fu, intricate machines reminiscent of steampunk, arts of the occult, and other intriguing elements that don't quite fit into any of these categories. In Phantom Blade, you play as Soul, an elite assassin serving an elusive but powerful organization known simply as The Order. Soul is framed for the murder of The Order's patriarch, gravely injured in the ensuing manhunt, and though his life is saved by a mystic healer, the makeshift cure will only last for 66 days. Now you must fight against powerful foes and inhumane monstrosities, all while seeking out the mastermind behind it before time runs out hmm. i mean this looks sick yeah sounds sick too uh yeah that that definitely aligns with all my interests but like i said i gotta see how this thing plays because it yeah. could have the greatest idea of all time if it plays terribly then if it plays like i'm mapping the buttons to a screen yes yeah. <laughs> then we have a problem if i hit square and triangle at the right time it would do something cool yeah <laughs> uh next up sword of the sea giant squid this is the mm. i mean clearly journey uh game but it, of course they share a creative director so that makes sense looks awesome uh, i yeah don't have much to add this looks kind of like that experiential kind of game that journey is but maybe with more gameplay elements we didn't really see too too much of the game it was kind of more of a spectacle trailer i would say than than really anything else but it looks awesome mm-hmm. i mean this is probably a day one for me just for how it looks yeah, it it's probably a day one. Will it be a day one ultimately when we get there? I can't guarantee that, but it looks like uh, there's a game called Omno that I really loved from, I think, the year before last. Um, and that game was great. It was a lot of, you know, you got a magic looking staff and you surf around on the staff and go through all these massive environments. This looks a lot like that, but a little bit more high fidelity and sand instead of whatever environment Omno had. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I'm very much so looking forward to it. Um, I like a lot of the giant. Well, I like a lot of the giant squid games from afar. I haven't actually played Abzu or Pathless or really just those two. Have they made something else besides those two? I think those are the only two they've made. 
um i know the creative director from journey so of course i've played journey but um those two i haven't played so uh i want to get around to them but this just seems like another game where i'm going to want to get around to at some point um maybe game pass or playstation plus one of these will help me alongside it but yeah at this point a lot of the games i play are if they're on a service sure i'll buy them because i very rarely buy new games as soon as they come out they did only make Abzu and Path. So there are a newer it. studio, but I do have faith as it did look very good. But again, yes. it might not have substance. It might just be kind of like Journey, although Journey was different in how it was good. Maybe this is similar to Journey. I don't know. We'll have to inevitably see. This, and that's kind of the theming, I think, with this showcase. We'll have to see because we didn't really see much. This reminds me of the famed Xbox gameplay showcase where they showed no gameplay of anything. Uh, this kind of reminds me of that, where we're just talking about concepts rather than hard, this is what the game looks like. Mm, indeed. Next one I was very into, but then in, upon researching, I got uninterested pretty much completely. Oh, no. Talos Principle 2. This is by Crow Team. This comes out sometime this year. Uh, the first person, I originally thought it was a walking sim. It is a puzzle game, and that immediately kind of turns oh, me yeah. off, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Especially if it's something like The Witness. I am out if it's like The Witness. Uh, oh yeah i'm sorry I, it's it's almost exactly <laughs> then I, i'm good i would not be playing this <laughs> uh it looks cool but i'm not playing this what, what about you mm -hmm. uh this is one of those things where it was funny because i saw it and i was like is this talos principle is this talos principle the entire trailer because i clocked it immediately but there's another thing where my brain started so to realize what's happening where i'm like talos principle isn't the tier of game that will be at a PlayStation showcase. Maybe a PlayStation State of Play, but not a showcase. So I'm like, yep. huh, weird that Talos got a spot. Um, now, shout out to them. I know some people like those games. It's very similar. Yes, it's like The Witness, but it's also like Mist, and it's in the lineage of a lot of these more quiet, slower-paced, think-about-it games. Um, not my type of game, but definitely something I'm glad exists. Uh, so it's cool to see them get a big spot like this, and it looks gorgeous, of course, but... Spot. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, shout out to them, but I, it's not for me. It's just weird that Cryotine, the people who make Serious Sam, were like, let's make something that is not Serious Sam mm -hmm. and make the exact opposite. So Pretty much. good for them, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And this indeed, is kind indeed. of, and these next three games is when it starts, when I start questioning the entire showcase. And I'm like, oh, this is not what I expected. Uh, and no shame to these three games. It's just these are not games that are on a PlayStation showcase. These are a state of play filler content. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's like you don't really want it there, but you need stuff to show. Exactly. And, here, and, and next up, we have Neva by Nov Mada. This comes out next year sometime. Not not specific. Not specified. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um. Again, <laughs> not much shown. It was a CGI trailer. It looks sad. Very much like Ori. Uh. And the uh, oh my god, Ori in the Blind Forest. Will I think the, will the first game. Will or the Will of the Wisps, which is the second one. one. But it reminds me of how the, they showed off the first one with it was very sad. They showed the death of this little creature man and, and then they like, you know, tugged at your heartstrings the whole time and it didn't really show anything else. This kind of reminds me of that where they tug at your heartstrings. They don't really show you what the game's about and they leave. So nothing really yep. to add. It looked the, the it, again, it looks cool, but I don't have much to go on. Yeah, the art style looks really nice. I like how it, it looks does. like the edges are rough and yep. um, it just looks like it's hand drawn in a very detailed way. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for that. But yeah, I didn't play Gree, which was that studio's first yes. game. I own it, just haven't gotten around to it again. So um, this one looks like another one where perhaps I'll give it a shot later. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, looks I want to I want to read the description because it tells you just as much as the trailer did. Experience the moving <laughs> tale of a young woman and her lifelong bond with a magnificent wolf as they embark on a thrilling adventure through a rapidly dying world cool arguably, great arguably the screenshots on their steam page tells you more about the game than anything and mm. it looks almost exactly like Gree, honestly ah uh, well there you go yep Gree too let's go <laughs> yeah pretty much uh this next oh, one I, I was just like what is going on cat quest pirates of the Caribbean by gentle bros this comes out 2024 <laughs> for ps4 and ps5 i was looking at this like why is this here no offense to cat quest not up for a playstation showcase it it's adorable looking i i it looks cute it looks like if i had like a, a a son or daughter that liked cute things i would buy them this 
aside it's, from that, I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these games where, because look, I am familiar with Cat Quest a little bit. I have, they're always like three dollars on sale on they whatever are. PlayStation oh God, sale. Yeah. You are so yeah. brave with that. They are always like every time you see it, they're always on sale for like five bucks. Mm -hmm, exactly so i've picked it up i own it on steam i own the first cat quest on steam i think i own cat quest 2 on playstation 4 and i've seen these games around they look like a fun they look like an easy platinum that's really the reason i picked them up they look like a very easy platinum and just something to run through without really thinking about it so i always thought these games were like some children game or some like mobile port or something like that but then this got announced during the showcase Apparently, there's like fans of Cat Quest out there in like the actual gamer sphere. Like, I like, I like that you said there's actual fans of this game out there. <laughs> That's so good. That's so well. Like, so I good. expected those fans not to be the type to watch a PlayStation showcase. Uh, so and I'm then right I'm seeing on Twitter. So, so mm -hmm. you you disagree with that? I, I my next point was gonna be again. This game looks pretty. The art style is very pretty. Actually, I'm looking at the Steam page right now. Again, PC. So it's like where are the exclusives? Anyways. I'm I'm looking. This looks adorable. This this looks awesome. I love the art style. This is actually something I might try just because this picture again. The Steam page gets me more involved than the trailer did. Uh, uh, <laughs> beside, that's the beside the point though. My next point was going to be this is a great game to show, but is there really that many people watching the showcase and and then being like, oh, I have to buy Cat Quest? Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I this just felt like a mismatch for this type of showcase because, yeah, it is a state of play thing. And it's more so less that the game is bad. It's just like I did not expect I don't expect the people who play this game to be watching this showcase. So why are you showing it to me here anyway? Are yeah. you trying to put me on to something new? Like, that's cool <laughs> and all. But I own these games and I haven't played them. So I don't know what to tell you. So, yeah, it's just very strange. But it's not the strangest thing that will happen in this showcase. Actually, it might actually be, but there's more strange things to come. <laughs> it, oh, definitely. With the next game we're talking about, it's very strange. But I'm going to read the description because it's hilarious. Get whiskered away on a hearty cat venture in Cat Quest Pirates of the Peruvian, the third installment in the award winning Cat Quest series. Play a swashbuckling pri privateer. In this 2.5D open world action RPG that gets so crazy, but like as you the, in a fantastical <laughs> pirate theme world, the Peribian, oh, no. an archipelago swarming with pie rats, searching for the <laughs> Northern Star, a long lost mystical treasure, alongside your trusty spirit companion, set sail through the Peribian in your very own ship. But be beware, the seas are dangerous, and a meow tiny is nigh. Uh. As the hordes of Ugh. high rats under the order of the Pirate King hunt you down. Mm. Look, I'm a corny motherfucker. That's too much <laughs> <laughs> That's so much. They, they said, get as much stuff in there as possible. The cutest action RPG you know and love returns for a colorful action filled l <laughs> furiously fun gameplay. Uh. Delve into a poduous new world with varied dungeons and biomes to explore and encounter fierce mm. battles with the newly refined combat system featuring tighter attack combos and weapon swapping. Play in either solo or local co-op. <laughs> uh, all right, that's that's fine. I will say, I'm looking at it right now, Cat Quest 1 and 2, the first games in the franchise, overwhelmingly positive on Steam. Oh, it's really? like people love these fucking games. So that's they're not garbage or anything. They're good games. It's just they look so unsuspecting. <laughs> they do. They do. It so, does not look you know. like I I would or should be playing it. Let's be honest. Exactly. Exactly. If, if you walked in and I was playing that, you'd be like, what's going on? No, like, if you walked you in doing? and I was playing it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, it's another one of these for Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Next up, we've already talked about it. Foam Stars. This is by Square Enix. I have nothing else to say. This looks, I mean, I really want to does. try it. This uh, yeah, I, I t report back to me if it is good. This frankly looks terrible. <laughs> it, here's the thing: it, it's I do want to try it because I like the idea. Looking at that gameplay, it is hard to read. It is hard to like, especially for eyes. a multiplayer I'm being game. Serious, like when it mm -hmm. started, I was like, "Whoa!" Like, why is everything so saturated? It, everything is so like turned to eleven. Mm -hmm. it, it it just makes it really hard to read to the point where you you need battlefield clarity in a multiplayer shooter and this one lacks that 
I don't know if that's because who cares about the tactical nature? Let's just have some fun. If that's the vibe, then cool. Maybe it's worth it. But from the onside looking in, it's like, man, I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah, Hopefully there's a beta or something. When they threw the bubble and it like popped, it looked like the bubble like stuff was like it looked like a layer on top of everything else and it just looked so janky to me and I was like, yeah this is it, it gave showed. me fracture vibes it gave me big vibes of fracture yeah. where the the land would crank up yeah. if you shot at it it's yeah. like that but with soap so soap just keeps mounting and mounting and you just walk on top of it it's weird <laughs> very strange oh fracture, boy fracture i i haven't played it since i was a child but i liked fracture and i can't tell you a single thing about it 13 year old me loved that shit. <laughs> I think my dad got it from a friend or something. Sounds about Lucky right. Lucky <laughs> Squire. This is by all possible futures sometime this year. This mm. is when I really started paying attention. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So, like, I was, again, very low, but this got me back in. I was like, oh, cool. This, this looks very good. I like this. This is actually, mm -hmm. this is like top three games of the show for me. Like, I really liked what this looked like, like the art style. That is fair. The way they kind of were innovated with how they showed us the game and how like they're playing with him on like the pages and things. This this looks very cool to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I I remember seeing this last year at uh, I think the Devolver Showcase is where it got shown off. And... Yes, it is being published by Devolver. Yes. Uh, good lord, this game looks incredible. Uh, the 3D looks crazy. The lighting in the 3D environments looks in fucking sane. When he had the flashlight in that one sequence, yes. it looks way too good um the the 2d elements look way too good everything about this game looks way too good i need it right now the only concern i have how is this gonna run on steam deck no way it's gonna look like that on steam deck i can't imagine it looks that good but because that is it's indie i want to play it on a steam deck but you know I'll, I'll stream it i've been having really good luck with playstation 5 streaming on my steam deck recently so perhaps that's where i'll play it it looks very good i'm on their steam page again for your pc as well <laughs> so many of these <laughs> games are uh, but this looks this looks great. I mean, I, I cannot wait for this. And it looks like you'll be jumping between 2D and 3D. It seem it seems like like very seamlessly. I, I don't know how that would be uh, in the game, but this looks awesome. It, there's a cute little uh, punch out thing that was happening too, where like you mm -hmm. were punching like this kind of badger looking guy. I I I can't I cannot wait for this. I I wish they had a solid date. Uh, a lot of these games, for some reason, had days for this year, but nothing close to something solid. So, yes, indeed, good shit all around for that game. Apparently, a game that is major in circles, but I don't, I did not know about this teardown. And maybe this is something oh, I read about um, at some point. I just didn't remember because this is actually apparently a pretty big deal. And upon research, it that it was confirmed that this is quite a big deal. People on PC love this thing. This is by Tuxedo, uh, Tuxedo Labs. This is coming to PS5 sometime this year. It apparently is huge in PC. Apparently they've done, I think they've done actual GDC talks because of how impressive this game is. And I think oh, they yeah. won like an engineering award for the game because of I how the, the, they have this specific voxel engine and everything is destructible in like a very Lego-ish way. Uh, if, if you guys can picture that at home, it, 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 it looks It looks great. I, I can't wait for this. If you guys can picture it at home, think Minecraft, but the pixels are maybe twice as big and you can destroy each three dimensional pixel in yes. space and it affects the physics of the environment. Mm -hmm. um, it is it's really cool. I've been looking at Teardown for a while. And yes, this is if you remember, like maybe two years ago, Jeff Keighley had this at a Summer Games Fest, had a trailer when it was just a one person dev team and no one knew what this game was. Showed it there, got a lot of buzz, came out on early access, eventually came out last year on PC full as a full release and it's good it's one of these games where it's super freeform uh where it's a heist game so your whole goal is hey you need to snag this item and get to the exfiltration point but you have to as soon as you take the item a timer ticks down so you have to get out before the time runs out so that means before you even take the item you sit there and hack at the environment you make the best escape route you blow out this door you use this log and stack it over here so you have a ramp you do all these things and assemble the whole environment use spray paint like you saw in the trailer to spray arrows hey go this way go this way go this way so you don't have to think about pathfinding and then you snap the item and then make a sprint for it and it is it's it's emergent gameplay it's that type of for all these people who love all the physics stuff in zelda for all these people who love all of the emergent gameplay of stuff like prey 
it's tickling that types of fancy. Um, now, usually that's not the type of fancy I like tickled, but I love destruction. I love destruction games. I love Red Faction Guerrilla, one of my favorite games. So this definitely looks up my alley. It is Steam Deck playable, so I might just play it on PC and get it over with. But it, now that it's on PlayStation 5, maybe it'll run more stably there. Because <laughs> I'm afraid, I don't know if my computer can run this damn game because of all the destruction physics and whatnot. But we'll see. And, and if you really want to see their, their accolades, just go to their Steam page. I mean, I, the reviews are overwhelmingly mm-hmm. positive. It's just so many little accolades yeah. they have from everything. Uh, it, it's it's very cool. They came out um, early access, October 29th, 2020. They released in mm. full April 21st of 2022. That's it. I mean, I this is one of those, like, very impressive things. It's, it was one made by, like, pretty much one person. It's very yeah. impressive that he was able to kind of figure this out. This was kind of a lost start, in my opinion. Uh, that was something mm-hmm. that was being pushed. I remember in the 316 PC3s, especially with like Battlefield and these things, specific, specifically Bad Company 2, where they were like, hey, you can break these walls and things. And that was really cool. And that's kind of gone. That no one really does mm-hmm. that in like a big AAA form, really. And this is kind of a return to that. Like, hey, everything's destructible. You want to, uh, the, one of the things on here is like, you want this big machine to go away? We'll blow up a hole and then have a mine, and as it's running towards you, you can blow it up and have it in the hole, and it can't mess with you anymore. I'm like, okay, that's really cool. You can really interact with the environment pretty much in infinite ways, and that's yeah. incredibly impressive, especially given it was pretty much just went one person. When it yeah. And there's a reason they got acquired by Saber Interactive like last year or something, so they snatched them up because they saw what they had going. Next up, uh, I'm, I'm sure a big pop for a lot of people. I'm just excited that I get to play them. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. This is coming to PS5. Uh, this is a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake of mm-hmm. the, of course, greatly acclaimed series Metal Gear Solid. They announced very quickly. I do not know why they did it so quickly. It was on for maybe three seconds. They announced the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. They specifically said Volume 1. That comes out sometime mm-hmm. in autumn of this year. Okay. What did you make of this? I, when I was watching this, I was like, is this some weird? What, what? I was really, again, I'm kind of down on the showcase. I'm up on the yeah. last few things, but I'm kind of like, what is this? Like, I really was like, what, what is this? What, what, what are you about to show me? And then <laughs> when it's clear that it's Metal Gear, I was like, okay, here we go. And then it ended. Yeah. I was like, it- wait, we aren't seeing anything from four of the games that you have because they're remaking one two and three then they're doing a full remake of the third game snake eater hmm. and we saw nothing. well i think are, are they just remastering one two and three as, as far I as i understand say, i apologize i did okay say i was I, I, I was concerned i was like it's, oh, a, shit. it's an hd collection i get those mixed up all the time because it's remakes no worries i apologize for you at home it is just a remake of those first oh jesus i just did it again it's <laughs> a remake of the third game and they're re-releasing the first three in yes, a collection yes, yes. Yeah, I'll say I'm more excited for that collection than I am the remake of the third game because that collection, I never played any Metal Gear game except Metal Gear Solid 4, strangely enough. I know I'm weird. Um, but oh, I'm weirder. I only played five and none of them. <laughs> none of them else. Actually, no, no, no. That idea makes more what was sense. going on. Does it? That makes more sense because everyone said the gameplay of five is so good. Who gives a shit it about was. the story? Just oh, experience I, the gameplay. I couldn't tell you a single thing. I killed an alligator man, I think. I don't even mm-hmm. know. And it just ended. I remember that very yep. fondly. It just ends. It just stops yep. happening. <laughs> exactly. So, like, that makes more sense because the gameplay was fun. I remember the gameplay in 4 being arduous. <laughs> so, I did not love the gameplay. Plus, I didn't know what the fuck was going on in the story. So, the two hours of cutscenes at the end, no closure for me. <laughs> I didn't give a shit. Um, but in any case, I was falling asleep during that cutscene, man. I beat that game at, like, 2.30 a.m. Oh, God. It's a long-ass game. Uh, but in any case... I'm excited to play these original games. Metal Gear Solid 2 specifically is a game I hear so much about that sounds so fucking cool to me. And I just want to see what all that's about. Um, 3, I know a little bit about. It sounds less interesting. But if I'm going to play it, I might, since the third one's coming to main console, major consoles first, I might play that first before the remake even comes out. But what concerns me about the remake also, uh, what my uh, my friend Al said on the reaction stream towards the end, Yes, they were putting out Metal Gear Solid 1 again. They did Twin Snakes on the GameCube. And when they told me that, I said, hey, you know what? I do have a Steam Deck. Maybe I'll go find that Twin Snakes. (laughs) We'll see about that. Because that's an actual, maybe modern feeling game compared to the PlayStation 1 game. 
So, you know, just saying well, that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kind of atmosphere, I guess I would say, around, around these kind of collections, people are excited, first off, that they're coming at all. And there's so many threads that you can pull at this, specifically talking about, let's start with Snake Eater. Um, Konami specifically re released this, like, the big thing where it's like, hey, you know, we really want to make all the Metal Gears playable on modern hardware, which makes sense. Like, you you want that, and it's kind of weird that they're, they're just doing it now, but they're at least doing it now. And they have these first three games going, and it's very cool. And then mm -hmm. they don't really get into specifics who's working on this. So I guess just Konami Creative is just working internally mm. to publish this game, develop this game. I don't know. but The development team. <laughs> yeah, just them the, specifically. They didn't specify who it is, but it is cool that they're at least saying, we are going to make the Metal Gears available to you. Uh, of course, <laughs> I love Hideo. I'm being, I, I want to be clear about that. It is funny not seeing any of his names everywhere because that is so Hideo Kojima. He puts his names the most possible ways he can. If he if he can be a producer, if he could be guy who wrote this thing and did all this, like he will put his name everywhere. Not seeing him was kind of weird, but for obvious reasons, uh, he was thrown out of Konami a very long time ago. He did retweet, or uh, yeah, he I believe he retweeted like someone saying they didn't like the trailer because it's clearly not Kojima. I think it was he retweeted a tweet that was basically like, "Man, I love Kojima trailers. Can't get nothing like that nowadays." Wink, wink, Pretty nudge, much. nudge. Yeah, wink, yeah, wink, wink. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I can't disagree because although again, I am not a Metal Gear guy. I love making fun of Metal Gear because people get so mad, and I love, <laughs> I love making fun of it because everyone, no one complains about Metal Gear being complicated. Kingdom Hearts so complicated so calm but metal gear you we got three different persons of, of the same guy we got everyone with code names and we get uh, yeah, yeah but like it's for adults so they expect you to sit there and figure it all out where kingdom hearts it's like isn't this a children's game it what the fuck's not. a heartless <laughs> oh a yeah heart it I'm, thank you for asking a heartless is someone who's oh, fuck. lost their heart <laughs> uh, but i just love making three hours later for that. yeah three hours yeah, yeah yeah um i yeah. just like i just like poking fun i cannot wait to play these games i'm being honest here i i really do want to play the first second third one i'll play the remake i want to get to know these games because they've been talked about so lawfully by so many people so many people have a connection to this specific series and we might mm -hmm. not see it for a long time they might do a bunch of these collections and then kind of leave it alone who knows really I think they're going to remake all the original ones because it's very easy to just stick to a template that's already been made and part of the reason I'm concerned about this remake is the reason I don't think they're going to make a, a new original Metal Gear game, at least not for a very long time. Because looking at this remake, just look at the trailer itself. Yes, it's CG. But 80% of that trailer was, look how pretty the environment is. Look how much detail we have on the smallest speck of nothing that matters to the actual game. You can see the hairs in this ant's back. Look how impressive that is, everybody. Now, eat a snake. And then... <laughs> exactly. Cause, exactly. Cause now you now you're wounded. Make sure you clean your wound and then patch it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like this is uh, with Metal Gear fans bring up like people like love it. They go back and play it and being like, God, this is like super survival. Like, why am I having to eat and clean things? And if you got a bullet wound, you got to clean the wound, then patch it up. And if you don't, you could die, I think, or something. Uh, so yep. I, I even fans of this game are critical of it. So maybe they wanted this one specifically to try and modernize it because apparently it does not hold up like kingdom hearts does <laughs> <laughs> it's less uh, it's less that it's more so that it seems like they're focusing on the fidelity to the chagrin of the actual game like it's like you didn't know it was a metal gear game until the last 10 seconds of that trailer and it's like that's great that it's going to be super pretty and it from the screenshots and everything it looks like they're using the same layouts of the previous levels and all that stuff it's going to be very similar to the original game but like where's the creativity in that where is the transformation in that if you're going to remake this thing you can do more than just you know give it a fresh give it the freshest coat of paint ever like i i'm just i'm curious to see what they're going to do to transform the game because i know people don't trust konami to do that especially if we don't know who the fuck is behind it but i don't know it just seems a little bit weird and a little concerning it's just it, it's the same vibe I get from all the Konami remakes. Silent Hill 2 as well. It's like, look how pretty it looks. 
But, you know, the whole the fact that the dude from Silent Hill 2 had a blank face the entire time was kind of part of the vibe of that game. And now his face is super detailed and he's whimpering all the fucking time. And now it just gives it a different <laughs> vibe, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I think I disagree a little bit because I'm fine with them sitting down and being like, hey, let's just modernize this. Let's make it pretty and then let's just re- re-release it. I don't think you can touch this game without, I mean, really pissing everyone off. Just because Hideo mm. has that special touch that no one can really figure out. So I can really see them just modernize it, make it look pretty, slap on a couple new control schemes, maybe have an easy mode where you don't have to worry about cleaning your wounds or whatever it was, and then just re-releasing it. Yeah, we'll see. Fingers crossed on it, but I have no idea. <laughs> we'll uh, see I, what happens. I saw a lot of Metal Gear fans very weary, so... We'll see how this happens. I honestly do not think any of them will stick to their guns. Everyone's going to play it and talk about it. But, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this will be the game that everyone actually sticks the guns about. Nah, everyone's going to play it. No, everyone's going to play it. Everyone's <laughs> going to play it. No one's going to know. Everyone's everyone's just lying. This is how Ta- it works. Towers of Agasha? This is by Dream Oh, this Studios. one. This was yeah. very pretty. I remember. Mm-hmm. I like this one. This one looks very. If you ever seen an Odd World game, or better yet, if you ever seen the Eternal Cylinder, that game, super weird art style like that. Bunch of weird mythical looking creatures with like weirdly long noses and tails and stuff like that. Just looks really off. You got a glider. You got base building elements. You got exploration, collecting resources. Three, two of those three things sound cool. Explore, exploration and collecting. I love that shit. The second I saw her like with a transparent house that she was about to plop down, I was like, all right, I'm probably good. But then the yep. trailer kept going. And I saw like some combat glimpses and other stuff. So I don't know if this game's going to be for me, but this art style looks weird and wicked and just gross in an intriguing way. So I kind of want to give it a shot based off of just that. Um, it's also very, it's screaming PlayStation Plus Extra day one. Oh, it's, it's just it, screaming it, now. It is, it is. Um, and, and there's a bunch of things I'm looking at the screenshots here. It it does kind of look, it looks like they're trying, I don't know. It looks like they're not afraid for the game to be ugly, if that makes sense. They're, it looks yes. like they're exploring in very dreary, kind of gritty areas. There's literally a place they go, it looks like Elephant Graveyard from Lion King, where like, there's just a bunch of skulls mm-hmm. everywhere. And then the and yeah. then the next screenshot, almost right next to that, is, hey, here's a Breath of the Wild glider, and look how pretty everything is. Oh, look how alien, look how Avatar ish everything mm-hmm. looks. Like, you know, this looks so alien, but like kind of plausible, but like not in a weird way, like kind of things. It, it I don't seems think like this it, is for it's me logical all, for a logic that isn't ours. <laughs> yeah, correct. It it doesn't look like this is for me though. I I don't think. Mm. Anything about this looks appealing to me, but it, but that this isn't my type of game. Yeah, hell of an art style. That's the main thing. I like things that are ugly on purpose. Shout out Kane and Lynch too. So Kane and Lynch a, too a, was so good. Up. People sleep on Kane and Lynch, and they yeah. are the dumb ones. Yeah, Dude, someone needs to buy that IP back. Actually, IO Interactive is independent now. If they got that yeah. IP after James Bond, let's do it, baby. Kane and Lynch three, Lynch, Dead Man Rise or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Tower. I want to read this real quick. Towers of Agashaba is an open world fantasy experience where players must balance between constructing bustling villages for their growing tribe. So it looks like you have a tribe with you and nurturing Mm. exotic ecosystems of otherworldly plant life. Express your creativity Mm. by developing your island however you'd like. Explore the whimsical land of Agashaba and connect with friends to show off your unique world. There's some sort of multiplayer aspect to this. Looks like you're developing a tribe and you can make a village and you make all these things. Awesome. It hmm. seems like something that's going to be huge, but not for me. Yeah, definitely. I- I'm looking forward to see what becomes of it. That's about my main interest level, but it looks interesting. Something I'm very excited about. Final Fantasy 16 is up next. Of course, Square Enix mm. Creative Business Unit 3. <laughs> Can't believe they made a logo and everything for that shit. They no did. name. They did, and they refused to change it. I remember that one of the studios talked about it, and they were like, oh, we're fine with it. We don't really care. I'm like, what? <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, nothing about this changed me in any way. I'm buying this game. I almost turned it off, but I felt like that would have kind of lessen this talk so i watched it anyways mm-hmm. kind of begrudgingly because i don't want to see anything else but i, hmm. I i'm ready for final fantasy 16 i have nothing to add. it looks cool i tried not to 
really like sink everything in. I was trying to just watch it and not like really pay attention because I I want to play the game. I, I, yeah. I and it's so soon. It's so soon. Mm-hmm. It's like what two more weeks, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm sure on paper this game sounds like something I would like because we really talk about DMC five. Yeah, yeah. It they have the same combat director as Devil May Cry five. I love Devil May Cry 5's combat. I think it's so great. I don't watch Game of Thrones. I said earlier, didn't like Lord of the Rings. I don't care about high fantasy, and they are leaning they are into leaning high hard. fantasy this time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that just sounds like nothing I care about. It doesn't sound bad. It just sounds boring to me. Yeah. Um, so it's it's one of those things where, like, oh, it's probably going to be really fun to play. But when it comes down to, like, oh, now I got to sit here and watch the cutscene. And for what yeah. I understand, very story heavy, a lot oh, of cutscenes. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be engaged by that stuff at all. So that's a shame. I might wait on it, um, but it looks like it'll be fun. Maybe I'll try it one of these years, way down the line, but not this year. Yeah, Black Friday, twenty bucks, pick it up. You know, yeah, I, that I have no. Like I I did I did really think you would like this, but if you are into the high fantasy aspect of it, it does really seem like they're leaning hard into story, which of course, mm-hmm. Final games definitely tend to do. But it does look like maybe more than usual that you are you're going to really like go into yeah. this it looks like it's going to be very political it looks like it's very tied to kind of in world uh similar to like almost like a cold war-esque features going on in this world yeah. kind of at, well I, again we'll have to uh, see how high fancy it is but yeah if that turns you off i don't imagine you want to pay full price yeah. for this i think black friday I'll- you pick this up for like 20 30 bucks if you're worried about it I'll say for Final Fantasy fans out there who might be disappointed by that, I do want to play Remake still. That world looks interesting. Midgar and all that stuff, that stuff looks cool. Even Final Fantasy 15 still looks more interesting to me than 16. But just this very traditional you know medieval world. Down, you know how many people would burn down houses hearing you say that? People hate Final Fantasy <laughs> It looks Fantasy more 15. interesting. I don't know why. I liked Final Fantasy 15. No, there aren't many stories with... Like... Just brotherhood is a guys thing. and brotherhoods and like just dudes being together and being brothers and like dudes there, being there's bros. like yeah dudes being bros that's i mean that's pretty much what it is i get why you would be turned off by that but i just feel like it gets a lot more flack than it needs to and and the the actual story was pretty good i liked it and the gameplay yeah, was yeah. awesome yeah i i will investigate i gotta see the prelude to forespoken <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i'm so shocked have you played forespoken I still have not. It seemed no. like an Emmet game, you know. It seemed like it, everyone it absolutely... would dog on it, and you would come out and be like, "It's not that bad, <laughs> dude." I literally have the fucking GameFly tab open. It's thirty bucks at GameFly right now. Ooh, that's not bad. It's not bad at all, and I know it comes with the case and everything. So I'm like, I should go for it. I also know I have a bachelor party this coming weekend and a SpongeBob Brave this coming weekend. And then the wedding after that, and then we're having a Juneteenth cookout. So I know all my money is accounted for for the next month or so. So I'm not touching anything that ain't any of those. <laughs> that sounds like a good time. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be a great time. I'm just going to be broke. <laughs> That's just how it is. I popped for this next one. Alan Wake 2 by Remedy. Mm, Firm date, yeah. October 17th, 2023. It starts off in that very, very good Alan Wake uh remedy esque where it's like overtone and he's talking the whole time it looks so 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 good i cannot wait for alan wake 2 important to note everyone microsoft as a reminder owned this ip remedy went back bought it for cents on the dollar why did they get rid of that ip why would they do that who knows <laughs> depends on when they bought it it was because if Don Matrick was still there, then yeah, I get it. No, it but... wasn't that far. Um, okay, I want to okay. say it was five years ago. Oh Something shit! Like that? In that case, I think yeah, Phil Spencer was definitely there. So <laughs> Phil was in charge Ugh. for sure. Mm. But maybe it... Phil was like, "Yo, we're about to get Doom and all these other things. Who cares what Alan Wake is?" Now it could have been a handshake, kind of like, "Hey, we will," but mm. and maybe we don't know what that but is yet. I don't know, but looks awesome um i cannot wait for it the everything from what the game looked like to the uh the way he was typing and saying the world and it looks like she's finding his writings about what's going on because like that's what uh kind of alan wake is about i i mean this looks this looks sick if i'm being honest mm-hmm. i cannot this is my this is kind of the biggest pop i think i had in this entire showcase honestly uh is is for this one because i because I, I popped for when they showed it 
I was like super ingrained in the trailer. They showed off a little bit of the gameplay. You can hear like the kind of Resident Evil esque enemies, kind of mm. uh, that popped yeah. out of the wall. He, he kind of reminded me of Resident Evil Four because I played it so recently, like with all the headdresses and stuff on. Uh, Makes sense. I'm excited, and then I popped again for the date. It's very soon, very soon, very happy. Yeah. With that. Yeah, I'm glad to see it's coming out soon. As a uh, low-key Remedy fan, you know, I love... I never played Max Payne 1 or 2, but I love fucking 3. Uh, and I loved Control. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I like a lot of their things. Alan Wake I did play, and I thought Alan Wake 1 was fine. The story was a little bit interesting, but the gameplay was boring to me. The whole, just aim at him. You can't shoot yet. You gotta let the shadow dissolve. You can't shoot yet. You can't, Okay, now you can shoot. Now you can shoot. I hope they find some way to modernize it or at least like make it a little bit more active gameplay um, if they're going to bring that type of style back this for this game. But it looks incredible. Like you could all the it looks almost photorealistic at this point. Like there's a lot of games that look like this, but knowing Remedy is a kind of smaller studio making games that look like this. It's fucking insane. I love the two characters you're playing as the FBI agent and Alan Wake uh, himself. It's cool. Um, looks incredible so i'm very excited for both of these and yeah i just want to see more about it i gotta go back and play that uh control dlc because i haven't played all of that yet um i know i know once it's one of those things where they gave us the dlc on ps4 but i don't want to go back and play it on ps4 where my save is but it's also hard to play the entire game again and get the platinum again just to play that dlc so it's like i gotta pick one um so yeah i'm interested in it but we'll see if i actually end up playing it come release 2019 is when they got I was close to year off 2019 is when they bought the rights back ah that's it wow that's Sh- recent. shocking <laughs> mm. I mean really shocking I can't good for them and again apparently it cost them virtually no money it seems like they're doing that with all their IPs Max Payne 1 and 2 they got that rock star they're making a remake now so you know they're making sure they have their own hands on their own stuff in some way remedy I'm keeping a close eye on because I really do think they're becoming a one of the biggest uh, developers in the in the game, and I love I oh, love yeah. I love Remedy. I I can't mm-hmm. wait for them to. I really want them to prosper. Yeah, I love how they're staying Control independent so through it all. Yeah, I hope it's that really stays good. this way. I don't want anyone to own them. I like them free. Also, apparently, they made Control with less than a hundred million dollars, which is unheard of. I don't know how they did yes. that. Maybe they just used some sort of uh, elbow they, grease and magic. Yeah, Elber Grease and Magic. Maybe they went. Um, where it's not like they use mocap. Yeah, that's true. It's oh yeah, aren't they like in Helsinki or something? Yeah, they're actually might be a Polish. Are they Polish? Yeah, somewhere that is in America. Somewhere that's probably cheap. Because that's why people talk about um, CG Project Red and all these things. Like, mm. do you know how much money they make, especially for where they live? Like, they make so much money. Um, let's see. They're in Finland. That's where the headquarters is. So, yes, yeah, indeed. they don't have to uh, pay the premium U.S. dollar. So that makes sense. A lot of things make much more sense now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next up, we have indeed. Mirage, Assassin's Creed Mirage by Ubisoft, October Yay. 12th. Very soon. Uh, I would be playing this, but it looks like Assassin's Creed. It, it very clearly is trying to evoke Assassin's Creed 1 specifically. It seems like they're marrying Assassin's Creed 2 in there as well with a couple things that they did throughout the trailer. It's Assassin's Creed. It looks great. They're going back to kind of their roots with this one. I can't wait to play it. I love Assassin's Creed. I know. I get it. People don't like Assassin's Creed because it's everywhere. But they sell really well, so apparently I'm not alone. Someone has like them. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I'm very excited for Mirage. Uh, I, I Once again, I can't say if it's day one because, hey, money. But... Uh, I have been craving hardcore for the last couple months now, that old school type of parkour slash platforming. Um, I was also thinking of Assassin's Creed 2 when I thought this, but I was specifically thinking about like the old Tomb Raiders, like Tomb Raider Underworld, where you had to like aim your jumps and be very methodical about where you're jumping and all that stuff and pathfinding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been missing that. And Assassin's Creed 2 totally had very similar ways of, okay, I got to line up this jump. I got to like know the lines that I'm going. It seems like Mirage is bringing a lot of that back. I'm very excited for that. Hopefully it works out. And the combat looks fine. The stealth stuff looks fine. It's really the parkour is what I'm mainly excited about. I'm probably still going to wait and see, at least for some previews, just to see, hey, yes, the parkour looks great. Does it actually control in the way that I'm thinking? And also, is the combat still good? Because Assassin's Creed 2 combat 
it's fine very easy it's very just easy. oh if i if i counter one guy i can just kill the whole room you kill i can everyone. just paint it all together which i will say and, and a lot of people had this issue with Splinter Cell, I remember, when it came back with Conviction. Mark and Execute. That, that Mark and Execute is so good, but I'm like, but you feel like a special agent, though. And I kind of feel that way here, too, where I understand people, like, I, I get it, it is too easy. And maybe and there probably should have been something with, like, a hard mode in there or something that you just can't one-shot everyone if you just counter one person. Because you are pretty strong, but you feel like an assassin. So mm -hmm. I didn't really hate it that much, because you it... it it's almost in theme with the character. And then that comes into the play of like the entire game's conversation. Like as I'm commander Shepard, why do I die to a, a no name Merc guy? So like there's a completely much more complicated discussion. Mm. One could have about these things. Like why is this magical legendary guy dying to a deer in the woods that hits you or something? You know, like there's little things that, that we discuss about that, but it's much more complicated, but I wouldn't hate if they kind of brought that back. I, I kind of miss it, although there should be some sort of difficulty adjustment. They should take mm. cues of, like you brought up Tomb Raider, one of the most recent ones. They You were able to very specifically tune difficulties with multiple things. How difficult oh, do you want yeah. stealth? How difficult do you want the combat? How difficult do you want the traversal in these things? Do you want auto-aim and these sorts of things? Really get it granular so if you really want to feel like an assassin, you can really bump those things down all the way and you feel like a big assassin's guy. Or if you want to feel more Hitman-esque, I guess, you can kind of bump it all up, make it very hard, make it easy for people to spot you, etc. Now, I will say, if they're trying for more of a, an assassin game, they do have to go against Hitman which is pretty troublesome because that's a very good game and that kind of lets you do whatever you want in the sandbox of your choice. Whereas this one looks like they're going the route of, which is funny how Assassin's Creed 2 did it, and 1 in some sense, but Valhalla tried to do this with, you would go and you had a target. It was really only in DLC and very few in the actual main story, if I remember right. But yeah. you would get to someone, they would say, hey, you need to kill this target. And then you could ask around, you could find clues, and you could be like, oh, the dungeon's open at this time, so I gotta, I gotta go in there. And they very much clearly was like, hey, let's go back to the roots, and also let's take some cues from Hitman and act like, you know, that's not blatant ripoff of, uh, hmm. similar to like Tomb Raider to Uncharted to now Tomb Raider copying Uncharted type of situation where they almost kind of did it that way. But yeah, I can't wait for Mirage. I hope it's good. It looks good. I'm curious where they're going to go Great. with the story because it's getting to the point where it's pretty complicated if you really need to, you really want to understand things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I understand each game. I'm not going past that. I'm not trying to connect them in my head. <laughs> yeah. Revenant Hill by Glory Society Games. Now, I'm going to have to look this one up. I don't remember this one. Do you remember this? This was the black cat from Night That's in the right, Woods. From Night in the Woods. Yep. Yep. Yep, but I don't think it's at all connected to Night in the Woods. I think they just use the same cat face for just a normal cat that doesn't walk or talk or have feelings. And you're apparently trying to be a witch's familiar. That is the whole premise of the game. Yeah. So it's so, like uh, you're here, trying to be Sabrina's black cat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Here's here's the thing, because this is not what I expected from this game uh, uh, upon looking this up. The year is 1919. After the bar he was living in burns down Twigs the Cat, Takes up residence in a wet log near an abandoned graveyard where the owl from the next hill over starts demanding rent. Twigs must find a way to make ends meet and things just get more complicated from there. Grow crops to sell at the secret market or use for your own purposes. Put down roots, run through the fields and trees, watch the seasons pass, make friends who become neighbors, who become family, also make enemies. That's unavoidable sometimes. Figure out what the ghosts want. Hosts in increasingly ambitious parties for witches and demons and other things that don't have proper names get tangled up in a world in the midst of a violent change build a community by accident square dance with a possum eat mice just a lot story. of words it looks, it looks fun it seems like they're trying to put in a bunch of things at once in this i'll be curious to see how deep any of that goes are you really like making all of this is, is it much less complicated than it sounds i don't know i'm excited for it though it looks mm. cool but this is one of those things where it's like let's see another trailer <laughs> you know let me see, see gameplay really let, let's see some gameplay i'm looking at some screenshots and look there's not much else to add they they pretty much look they didn't really add anything looks cool though mm. 
Yeah, sounds cool. I- I'll say when I saw the trailer, I saw like the little riot going on in the background of one of the shots, and I was like, "Ooh, civil unrest." I wonder what that's about. <laughs> um, but yeah, as a cat, interesting. Uh, but I got to see what this game is. It, at, n- people like Night in the Woods, so I trust their narrative chops at least. Uh, except you know, there was one person who worked on Night in the Woods that had a really weird controversy back in the day. Um, but that guy's no longer on the picture. So someone passed away. See what happens? It was a suicide. Some, yes, where it came out the day had done abusive things during the development of that game, and yeah. then it came out and the next day he killed himself. Yeah. So yeah, very weird that was. But in any case, this game, I, we'll see what happens with it. I'm I'm interested. I want to see more of it. I don't think I'm gonna play it or anything yet. Uh, yeah, this probably isn't a must play. This probably, if I see something very interesting, I might play it. I don't know. Hmm. So, yeah, Grand we'll Blue see. Fantasy 2023 by Psy Games. Mm. I have nothing, nothing to say. This looks like one Dude, of the Dude, this game games. looks neat. No, really? Okay. This didn't strike as an anime game. Please tell me about it. See, look, yes, it's an anime game. It's anime as fuck. But sometimes an anime game just looks right to me. Tales of Arise looks right to me. I want to play some more of that. Um, what is it? Nexus? Fuck, what is that game? Ne- Scarlet Nexus. Scarlet, Scarlet Nexus. Nexus. Yeah anime game as fuck it looks right to me this grand blue game looks right it just looks like it's fun it looks like it's colorful it looks like the combat's gonna be pretty good it looks very actiony and if it's actiony great i I, they showed gameplay but like there's no hud or anything so i don't know if i'm pressing x to swing a sword or if i'm pressing x to command my guy to swing a sword so you know it's one of those things where i'm not sure entirely what it is until i see more of it but this looks all right. This this looks like it's right up my alley. Will I play this day one? God, no. But every now and then an anime game just looks right to me. And this looks like the type of game that I might fuck with. So we'll see. So, yeah, it's Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, it's class-based. It. I can't tell if this is an auto-battler. It looks like it. Hmm. Um, I'm looking at Grand Blue right now. Actually, there's a bunch of Grand Blue games. <laughs> Uh, now you're on the wrong one. I am. That's why. I was like, there's no way this is coming to PlayStation. This is a handheld game, and it is. Um, let's see. Grand Blue. The, so so this looks like it's Grand Blue Fantasy, but it's getting a PS4 port. Oh, really? That's it? I believe so. Okay. Gee Willikers. So it's been on PC for a while, you're telling me. Well, it's been a mobile game. It's been that's a mobile game? Yeah. As far as God I understand damn it, <laughs> I can't believe this. This is this is I believe it's me. called Relink. Yeah, coming to yeah, it's it's Grand Blue Fantasy Relink coming in twenty twenty three, PS four, PS five, and it's coming to Steam as well. And mm-hmm. I believe it's just Grand Blue Fantasy. It's just they're making it a, an actual console and PC game. Uh, Hot damn. Sure. Well, it looks good as shit. And hey, look, I I, I talk a lot of shit on mobile games sometimes. Some of these mobile games be hitting. Some of these games are good. Uh, so let me not talk too much down on those mobile games because a lot because some of them are fun. Um, but yeah, this game looks this game looks legit. I just can't believe it was a fucking mobile game. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's you're yeah, right. The, yeah, yes, 2023 that's why I was for confused because I I clicked on so there was Relink underneath it and then Fantasy was on top. I clicked that. So yeah, it was the mo it was a mobile game and then then boom, it does look pretty. I will say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm looking at their official website right now. It uh, looks like see. what's the other one? The Val is it Valkyrie Profile? No, it's yeah. a, there was a game that came out late last year from Square Enix that was another no, Val- hack and slash fancy yeah, game. Yeah, I, mean, I think you nailed it. Valkyrie Profile. Valkyrie Profile. Or is it a elite? Yes, uh, yeah, Valkyrie Profile. Valkyrie. Yeah. Ooh, maybe no. Valkyrie Profile might be may not be it. No, it came. Yeah, this is it. The conventions, the dungeon crawler, the highlighter. Yeah, I guess that's it. I, I, fuck. I don't know how I pulled that out of my a, ass. I did not think huge, I knew it's that. It's a long series. I mean, the first release was 1999, so it's been going out for a long time. Wait, no, I might be wrong because this isn't the game I have in my head. I'm looking at it right now. Wait, are you? Yeah, looking... this is a this is a strategy game. Oh, so what, what? are you looking for? Are you talking about Valkyrie Elysium? That might be it. Valkyrie Elysium might be it. Yeah, it was like a it was like about like the Nordic gods, like you you like were commanded by Odin and stuff. Yeah, this is yeah. the one I want to play Valkyrie Elysium because it looks like just a beat 'em up. It is, it is. I played it. It's it's good. It's just a, a bit vapid in its world, but it changes mm. qu- kind of fast because you get another world. I can I it can hold me, 
but it wasn't terrible. It just it wasn't very good to me. Okay. Well, um, if I see it for twenty or under, I'm gonna pick that up. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. It's definitely twenty. Twenty bucks. Yeah, it's not bad. At okay. All. Yeah, it's at, it's absolutely like Grand Blue looks like this type of game. Like I would like it to that degree. So I definitely would try it out. Except Grand Blue looks way more colorful than Valkyrie Elysium. Yeah, yes, yes. The Valkyrie Elysium <laughs> is very mute. It does not have many colors. Yeah, it's got like three and they're all shades of blue or brown. They're really going uh there isn't much really on their website, but they're really going into like we've carefully crafted everything to make sure it works in a 3D space. Mm, very excited. I like that. Yeah, can't wait to see more of that game. Uh, next up, Street Fighter Six, June second. I mean, I get it why they want to be there. It was one of those where I'm like, this is out in like a week. Have we really shown this? Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't. I must say, I am not a huge Street Fighter guy. Uh, I much prefer Mortal Kombat. I'm not too too much into Tekken, but I do love both Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. I'm ready to play this. Don't really have much bad. I, I wanna, I wanna get hands on it. I want to try out their character thing. I don't think I'll like it. I think I'll just be playing as I can or something. We'll see. We'll see. I'll say I'll the tier list for me fighting games, Virtual Fighters at the top, because that's the Ooh. one I played the most of. I yeah. know I'm weird, but Virtual Fighter 5 was free when I got my PS3. I got every trophy. I don't know why. That's what you do when you're 12 and have no other games. You have nothing um, else. Yeah. It, exactly. So that's what I did. Um, then it's probably Mortal Kombat. No, then it's Tekken, then it's Mortal Kombat, then it's Street Fighter. But I'm interested in Street Fighter. Uh, they're really going. I, I don't know if you could tell. You put Lil Wayne in the video and you add a bunch of new characters, one of which is like a really cool looking black girl, and you got hip hop sick. all throughout the trailers. They're talking to a certain demographic with this game. Who is it? And you think <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe we'll find out June 2nd. But uh, I'm not gonna lie. They're, Is it they're, rhyme they're with anything by chance? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> rhymes with a lot. <laughs> but in any case, um, yeah, they're talking to me with this game, and I don't blame them because they're saying a lot of the right things. It looks really cool. Even my girlfriend, we walked past someone playing this game at PAX, and she was like, "Oh, it looks cool." And she she plays video games. She is not a Street Fighter type person. Right. So you know, they're doing something here. Uh, all I can say that uh, what is that bachelor party I'm going to? It's just yeah. a bunch of us hanging out in a cabin. It's literally the day that Street Fighter Six releases, and I know my buddy who's getting married, big Street Fighter guy. So I'm bringing that with us, and I'm gonna let him just keep the copy, so we can just go ham all weekend. So yeah, very much looking forward to that. That sounds awesome. Um, I can't wait to try out the. Uh, her thing was like um paint, uh, spray paint. So mm -hmm. I was I, de I definitely want to try it, see if I can match her. I don't know if her play style will match up with me. Definitely trying her out. If not, I might go into like a, I forget his name, but the guy who went to prison. I like him a lot too. Oh, uh, Akon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he sung um, a song about it at least. I'll be Kimberly. Kimberly's my main, unless I make my own character or something. But Kimberly looks great. Juicy Smoothie. That's who I was thinking about. Juicy smoothie. That I <laughs> give me four thousand years. I'd never guess that shit. I'm, I'm just kidding. It's not juicy smoothie. <laughs> uh, hey, I believe it? you. No, no, juicy uh. smoothie is a very funny guy. Mm. Uh, yes, indeed. Ultros. This made mm. this did nothing mm. to me. It looks it looks very close to like a Dead Cells esque. It's a Metroidvania, uh, self described Metroidvania, I should say. It's by Hadoki, twenty twenty four. Uh. It looks cool. I don't really feel like I'll be getting into it too much. I I like the look of this one so much. I think it it looks psychedelic. It looks so trippy with all the it colors to the point. Yeah. It's it's so many colors where it feels like it's clashing a bit, which I also think is kind of the point of this art style to have mm -hmm. all these colors blending aggressively. Um, it looks a lot like Ghost Song if you remember that game from last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, side scroller. It's like Ghost Song, but if that game whispered, this game screams. And yeah, that's I, true. I like the vibe of it. It looks a little bit hard to read, especially if you're gonna have combat and boss battles and stuff. Because of those colors clashing, it's a little bit hard to read. So I'm hoping there's some R's around your main character so you can see where you are and all that. But um it looks cool. I, I wanna see more of it. Uh this is it's leaning towards a day one for me. This seems like the type mm. of thing I want to jump into immediately because i did that with ghost song i jumped in at first and 
thought it was fine, but just haven't got around to playing more of it. This I am even more excited for it than Ghost Song. So I t- yeah, downloaded to Ghost it. Song. I just never went to it. I, I should go- maybe go back. I don't know, but Ultros. It just I don't know. Maybe it's because the colors clashing. But it just I looked at it and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm usually into this type of game, but something about this, I'm not really sure what it is. It's just not not calling me i don't know it's off the colors are off-putting it's fucking lisa frank folders coming to life <laughs> <laughs> it's great tower of fantasies up next comes to ps4 ps5 by perfect world games i have nothing really to add to this i want to look up it looks fantasy. definitely a genshin impact we want to be genshin impact hopefully we're genshin impact type of game well yes but i remember looking at this and i was like "Ooh." That looks interesting and because it looks very pretty. It looks like a cool art style. It looks like a lot of melee action, a lot of exploration, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know it was a free-to-play game that has been on Steam forever. Yep. And also, I'm pretty sure I've seen the name Tower Fantasy in, like, Twitter ads for mobile games. Yes, probably have, yeah. So it's like, I feel kind of, I feel duped. Because I saw this, I was like, oh, that looks cool. In the same way that Grand Blue Fantasy looks cool. It's like, oh, very colorful, action-y, anime, whatever. And then I hear it's a fucking mobile game that's been available for fucking a year or close to a year on Steam already. What am I doing? Is this the type of shit that I like now? This is, um, but this is pretty much yeah, 10 cents attempt at Genshin Impact. That's what I see. Impact. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, good for them, I guess. But eh, I don't want to play it because of what it is. But what it looks like, it looks really good. But it, I know what that leads to when you talk about these free to play games. What's funny is, I'm, I mean, I'm all about the Weibo things. I just talked about Kingdom Hearts. I love Persona and these things. But something about these types of games completely is nope. Turns me off. Xenoblade Chronicles is another thing where it's like you'd think I would be into that. I just every time I look at it, I'm like not into it. And and Tower of Fantasy, Xenoblade, looking, yeah. even in looking at the screenshots, it looks this just doesn't look appealing. Well, the the Steam page has screenshots with the buttons on screen still, so we know exactly what type of game this is. But um, yeah, when you talk about Xenoblade, Xenoblade more just wants your time, not your money. Like they want you to play it for thousands yeah. of hours. Yeah, and, and it's free to play, which is an immediate turn off in this specific type because we all know how they'll make their money, and there's no mm-hmm. fun in that. That's why I loved the Fire Fire Emblem mobile game, but it demands so much money from you, I can't play it. I'm not gonna sit there and just pour money into this thing hoping I get something good. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, that's how it goes. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Tower of or what is it? Tower, Tower of Fantasy? Fantasy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm also probably not going to play. Generic name. Very generic name. Tower of Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's this? The most generic, maybe. <laughs> Next up, finally, after the very strange, slow reveal of their shirts underneath button shirts on a Capcom stream, Dragon's Dogma Two. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm ex- we got gameplay of this. I'm I am too. It looks like Dragon's Dogma pretty much. We're like boom boom boom. This is Dragon Dogma. This is a Dragon Dogma game. It looks like Dragon's Dogma. Sounds like Dragon's Dogma. It's Dragon's Dogma. They even <laughs> there are some points where I'm like, are they showing things from the previous game? I was very confused. Specifically with the dragon that they show. That is almost the exact same thing that they're that they did with the dragon from the first game. So I was sitting there like, there are the I don't want to spoil the first game, but that that it, it it does kind of make sense why that happens. It's just, are we doing the exact same thing? Are we really like gonna have our hearts stolen by a dragon and then we're gonna go kill the dragon? Like that is that really what we're doing again? I don't know. But the gameplay of Dragon's Dogma is why you go to it. So I don't really mm-hmm. care about anything else as long as they deliver on that. And the um, what are they called? The pawn system was very good in that game too. You can make your own yes. party of people and you can like send your pawn to other people. That was very cool. Yeah, I think that especially in now nowadays where the Dark Souls Ian oh leave a message and that whole community is such a vibrant thing. I think having a living version of that in the pawn system is gonna be a very, you know, fun thing for people to play around. But yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm surprised. All they had was a logo last year. I'm surprised within a year we're already getting gameplay. That must mean this game is coming out sooner than we think, maybe even early next year. Um, so Maybe. yeah, we'll see about it, but I'm, I'm happy for all the Dragon's Dogma fans. I, I'm happy that fans of an obscure game that no one ever decided to make a sequel to are being rewarded for sticking in there for a decade. Like good for y'all. Uh, I know that feeling or at least half that feeling. We'll see if they come around and give me a new game. <laughs> <laughs> 
Help Wanted 2. This is one of the Five Nights, uh, five, uh, five Nights at Freddy's games. This is by Steel Wool Studios. This comes out sometime late this year. Mm. Yeah, it's for yeah, no. I mean, yeah. It, uh, all right, moving on. Yep. Uh, this is the start <laughs> of their PSVR 2 segment of the show. Don't know why it was this late in the show, but. Or why are. it was this long either, but we'll see. Yeah, there were definitely ones where I'm like, why do we have that? Resident Evil 4, PSVR 2. I know that's a big deal. I get why it's here. It just isn't exciting because we saw it from a mile away. So they announced here. it already. So, oh, yeah, they did, Maybe they that's did why announce I wasn't it. Surprise then. Yeah, they said, hey, it'll be coming. And when they said it'll be oh, coming, I thought, all right, why... next year, oh, next year, God. it'll come. No. No, you're right. I remember they said like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like fully playable because they have a VR mode now, right? Don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be playable on VR. That makes sense. So yeah, I, that's why I wasn't surprised. To me, I was thinking from the point of view, it was like, yeah, Resident Evil Seven and Eight are all playable. Four is gonna be playable, and there it was. But yeah, I also probably already knew from that too. I'm not, I have nothing mm-hmm. in it, so we'll just move on. Arizona Sunshine Two by Vertigo Games coming 2023. Very funny um trailer, but. I don't really care funny. about PSVR 2, if I'm being honest. I'll, I'll say the trailer was funny because it's all zombies, so who cares? That trailer gave me Postal 2 vibes oh. in a way that scares me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's pretty dark if you sit there and think about it. The cartoony-ish, not really. It's not very cartoony, it's, but the cartoony-ish aspect maybe dampens in a bit, but I understand what you mean. It is pretty graphic especially since you're the one doing it. It reminds me of my ideal Hitman game. Uh, when I heard it, mm. they were making a Hitman VR game, I think they already released it too, didn't they? I don't remember. Well, they got a VR mode in Hitman 3, I think. That's probably what I'm... Th- uh, that's what I mean. Um, I was saying when that was originally announced, I'm like, that sounds cool. But now we're in the weird stage of like, you're going to strangle a person to death in VR? That seems, I don't know. That seems, that seems yeah. weird. Because they do look so much like people, so it's it just seems weird that like you're gonna grab the piano wire and you're gonna like like hold them there like, and start yep. squirming like ooh, I don't know that and that kind of is the aspect we hear, but at least they're zombies, so it's not quite the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just tonally it felt weird. I'm I played a little bit of Arizona Sunshine, so you know it's a fun game, but we'll see what it works out to when it comes out. Uh, Crossfire Sierra Squad. This is by Smile Gate. The of course. A sequel to the original Crossfire game, very popular. I remember a lot of people liking this game, and they're making a sequel. It makes sense. I'm nothing, nothing that. I, I, I am sorry. I'm going to be boring in the PSVR two segment. I, PSVR two completely turned me off in multiple ways. It's not backwards compatible. It has no PS Plus collection type of thing. So why do I care yeah. about this thing? I, I, I just, I just don't. So I'm, I apologize if I'm boring at home. No, nah, it's it's absolutely fine because I I looked at this. I will say Sierra Squad looks like a fun shooter. It looks very basic. It's like Crossfire. But it, that, that's why I can't yeah. get excited for. It. I'm like it looks like it almost looks like a port. I, it looks prettier, so I, I know it's not. But it, it it's how do I, I don't know how do you get excited for that? I, I, if I was a PSVR two owner and I watched this, I would be like, that's what you have to show me. I just paid six hundred dollars for this thing. And see, that's I what wouldn't you're be show me. It it less be oh I'm pissed that you don't have anything great to show me. It would more be like, yeah I'll play that, but it'd be very middle of the road for me. I wouldn't be excited about it. I'd be like yeah that looks fun, but dude I I don't have another Horizon. I I know it's only been a couple months, so yeah you got your Horizon launch title and you shouldn't be getting one of those every single month or anything. But apparently that wasn't very good. Yeah. I heard it was fine, because especially yeah, people I heard it was people already. Bad. Horizon is already a franchise that people are like middle of the road on. So like a lot of people are like, oh, Horizon 7 out of 10, when a lot of other people are like, oh, it's a 9 or 10. I'm See, in that second I'm camp. Op- I'm a, yeah, I'm the opposite. I can't believe people don't like I, I really am shocked when people are like, but Horizon's not that. I'm like, what the fuck? I was just like, we're, we're not playing the same game. Like There mm-hmm. are people out there that say like, and maybe you agree with them, I don't know, but they're like, I just can't imagine looking at Breath of the Wild, and I'm going to talk about Tears of the Kingdom later. But like people look at Breath of the Wild and look at Horizon Two, and are gonna tell me Breath of the Wild's better. I just can't imagine. I, I'm not. I'm not there. I don't. Don't really. Breath understand of the Wild. It. We'll, we'll talk about it because we'll I got talk, Tears we'll of the Kingdom we'll too because I've been playing it, it, it as well. So next yeah. up, Synapsis by N Dreams. This is July fourth. This looks great. This was the first mm. time I was like, wow. 
I finally found a good PSVR 2 game that might tempt me in like a percentage way of buying one. Finally, it looks Damn. it looks very cool. It looks like a roguelite, actually, because it looks like you start off like, you know, with nothing. And then he started the game with like a giant shotgun. The guy kind of reacted like, oh, you're back uh, type of thing. So it looks cool. It's apparently this guy's like a bad like. Uh, a bad t- like guy? take over the world type. I was trying to get a word like. Oh, he's a opposite- villain. Yeah, it's like an opposite of philanthropy. So you're invi- invading his mind because he's in a uh, he's in his house, like on this machine. And you can like it puts mm. people's minds in there. And apparently a bunch of people have tried and he's killed them all. So this is your attempt to to try and and beat him. Mm. It looks it looks cool. Do you look is all right. Might be worth checking out. Uh, yeah, it looks really cool. The art style looks neat. Uh, they got David Hayter and I think uh, not Jennifer Hale. Who's the other woman that's in every game? Oh, no, I thought Jennifer she was Hale the was black in girl in. Is that Jennifer Hale? I thought. She I thought it was the other one. Uh, who's crazy? the girl from Uncharted Four? Laura, Laura Bailey. The... Yeah, I thought it was Laura Bailey and David Hayter. Jennifer Hale might be in there too. Shit, with those two, like they all run in the same circle, low key. They do. They hundred percent do. Um, I'm gonna say Jennifer Hale in Synapses and see what comes up. Okay, but yeah, it, it looks interesting. It looks like you know. So if I already Laura had Bailey, a PSVR two, yes, Laura Bailey might be in it. But David okay, Hayter yes. and Jennifer Hale are the voice actors. I don't know if Laura okay, Bailey is okay. in, but, but those two are for sure. Okay, I might have just misremembered, but if I already had a headset, this is definitely something I would buy for that headset. I'm not buying a headset for it. No, no, I am right there with you. I need a library. I'm not going there without a library. I'm not sitting I'm not sitting on this thing, using it once, and being like, can't wait for another game on this thing so I can finally play it. So mm-hmm. moving on. And it's funny is I'm such an easy buyer. All you had to do is make it backwards compatible. Bought it, day one. They mm-hmm. wouldn't would have already had it. You would have already had six hundred dollars. I would have already given you the revenue of all the other games I would have bought. In. But they refused to do that, and that's why they're not getting my money. Beat Saber mm-hmm. is up next. Should have been there at launch. Why did it take them so long? Who knows? It's there now, and they have a Queen's pack, uh, which is Queen's awesome. Queen's pack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's good. Good for them. I'm glad it's a free upgrade at least. Like you don't have to pay for the PSVR two version if you already bought the PSVR one yeah, version. So. It is a free upgrade, which is cool. Yeah. Very for nice once. of them, honestly, because yeah, they didn't have to do that. I'm curious if they got some some leverage with PlayStation. They were like, "Hey, pay us and be a free upgrade." I don't know. I'll be curious to hear that. But very nice of them to be a free upgrade because no one really else really did it. So why you know? They didn't really have an incentive to do it either, but and people would have bought it. But that mm-hmm. shows that um that studio is very good. Indeed, indeed. Next up, the biggest news probably of the whole thing, you could argue, Marathon from Bungie. Mm-hmm. Almost a pretty much a reimagining of pretty much their second game they ever made back in I want to say the nineties, early nineties, late eighties. I can't quite remember the quite year, and there was a trilogy of games. Uh, fun fact: Those are open, uh, or sorry, uh, they're they're um open source. So you can, the people could, like make fan games and stuff in Marathon. You can go check mm-hmm. that out. Uh, all three games are. Yeah, I love one. You can go download them all for free right now. CGI trailer. We've said it a million times. Or I sorry, I said I don't. I don't want to speak for you. I am the Bungie guy. I'm on Destiny all the time. I'm playing it. Doesn't change the rules. CGI trailer. It looks beautiful, but. I don't know anything else. The write-ups are very good. There's actually a Vidoc. I haven't watched it yet. I haven't had the time. There's a Vidoc of Bungie talking about this game that are actually very good. Their Vidocs are always good, so I can't wait to watch it. They said something very interesting in their write-up for this game for their press release. They pretty much did all these things like, hey, Vidoc, you know, these things, this is what it is, an extraction shooter. It's PvP only, no story at all. And they pretty much ended it with something I liked. We're going dark. We'll be back with gameplay and a release date. Respect. Wow. Respect. That's, I like I love that. I love that. That's really bold to say, hey, I because they can afford that time. Oh, they, they can, can do let's be clear. They can yeah. do <laughs> what destiny stuff forever until they have that ready. Like yeah. they've earned that right, but it's just so bold to see, hey, we're shutting up until we have the things you want. Yeah, that I that's not something you see very often. They said Going dark. See when we have more. Uh, like that, that major respect for me for saying that. Mm-hmm. But again, I gotta see the game. They have very, very good leads on the game. Uh, one lead with a long time Bungie vet on it. 
Uh, he was mm. Halo Two vet. He, I mean, uh, they got the they got the sauce. So like, I have no worry that they'll bring the heat with this. I just have nothing to go on. And like we say before, we get we we're lied to all the time. But it looks beautiful. Oh, I will and I will say, say before I yes. throw it back to you, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Very quickly, I am not seeing anyone upset or putting two pieces together or really discussing this. This is why PvP and De- and Destiny Two sucks, by the way, because everyone's gone. For this? Well, not even not in that specific sense. I feel like people say, that, "Oh, like, the team left to it. go." Like, oh, okay. they they. I saw a lot of people say, "No, they want it bad, so people go play this." You're thinking to you're you're missing the forest. Mm-hmm. Their team is gone. They have no one to work on this stuff. They're all their creatives, all their good people. Fr- you know, no, no offense to the team there, but their talent is gone. So they don't have anything to do. So they're just kind of rehashing stuff. They're re-releasing old maps that probably take very little work to to really make work in their new engine. This is why Destiny 2 PvP sucks. Do with that information yeah. what you will, though. I apologize. I, I uh, cut you off. Please please uh, tell me about oh, no. Marathon. What do you think about it? I want to hear your thoughts. I don't have too much to say other than Marathon looks incredible. The art style, the art design of that CGI trailer looked absolutely insane and super fascinating. Um, But of course, CGI. So there's only so much excitement you can get out of me with that. And also, my excitement based off of that weird alien art design is canceled out by the fact I 80% know what this game is going to be because it's a multiplayer extraction shooter. Yep. They kind of they tell you everything about it, really. I, I, it's funny mm-hmm. that you can almost picture it kind of in your head, like what this game is. Exactly, like it's so easy to picture that it takes out all the mystique and mystery out of it, um, which is fine. Bungie, Bungie makes multiplayer games now. That's all they make now. So I kind of have to just accept that. Yeah. But you know, it kind of limits the scope of what I can imagine when you talk about a new game from them. So I'm sure Marathon won't be fun. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure I'll try it out even, but eh, I can't have any thoughts about it until I see gameplay. Cause once I know what it is, then my brain doesn't race anymore. It just waits for, for you to fill in the coloring page. I, I must, I must admit, I don't think this is a Emmett game. I don't know. I'll be curious. I don't if think you like this. Mo- Extraction shooters are not Emmett games. Battle Royale, anything where it's one life to live not typically an Emmett game. That's yeah. just not something that I vibe with. There are some exceptions, but they are exceptions. Um, I don't think this is going to be it. And I like Destiny a decent bit. I don't sit there and play every single thing, and we're going to talk about Destiny in a second, but um, I don't know. We have to see. We'll wait and see. I don't think it's going to be an Emmett game, but it looks beautiful, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, just so you know, General Manager Scott Taylor, I was trying to look uh, things up prior to him on Moby Games. To see what he's been mm-hmm. working on, I couldn't. There's a lot of Scott Taylor, so I had trouble. Yeah. Uh, and then game director Christopher Barrett. That's going to be the, in my opinion, the main. That's the guy who's got the stuff. Like if you just go mm. look at his Moby games, look at his game credits. This man knows what he's doing. So that that really does make me excited. And then they have a blog post, of course, on PlayStation Blog. I want to quickly read a few things. Uh, Marathon is a sci-fi PvP extraction shooter. Marathon will find players engaging one another as cybernetic mercenaries known as runners. Exploring a lost colony on the planet of Tau Seti IV in search of riches, fame, and infamy. Marathon is currently available for PS, PlayStation 5, and PC with full cross-play and cross-save. It is also an Xbox game. Of course, you're not gonna they're not gonna say that on the PlayStation blog. To mark the announcement today, when I'm, I'm okay, that's pretty much everything I wanted to read out for everyone. You can of course read about this. They have a very long blog post, like I said. They have a long blog post, they have a Vidoc, and then they will be going dark. So it's up to you to figure out what you want to listen about, Marathon. Moving on. Mm. Something that I popped for, because I really did not think this would happen. Destiny 2 Final Shape, they announced a showcase on August 23rd uh, for multiple things. One, it's going to detail what Destiny looks like when it is done, in quotes. We're going to put that in quotes. When it is done, mm. it is finishing its saga of its stories, starting all the way in Destiny 1. And it is going to be finished with this expansion of Final Shape. So, what does Destiny Two look like? Does it continue? Does it make a? Do they announce a new thing? Does it stay this way forever? I don't know. I can't imagine. D three. I can't imagine in five years we have something called Destiny X, and it's an expansion for the game I'm playing right now. At some point, they have to leave these last gen behinds and really flex like some new stuff. I don't know when mm-hmm. that is. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Who knows? We will know August 23rd. All of that being said, 
let's talk about what they actually showed. It was very short. It is only a minute, pretty much. And it is with Ikora Ray, one of the big characters in that game, speaking to someone who was previously dead uh, in Kate yeah. 6. He has been dead since Forsaken. Uh, and it looks like he has some sort of light or esque something coming from him. Who knows what that is? Yeah. And Reanimated it looks like somehow. And it looks like they're potentially in the Traveler, which is mm. very interesting. I, I'm curious what's going to happen. Maybe the Traveler is a heaven. Let's put that in quotes for mm. people who have the light and die. Maybe who everyone who dies goes there. Don't know. Mm. We'll have to see. I'm very excited. Did this yeah, move I'm, you at all? You you did just say you were not a Destiny guy. Did, do you care about any of this? Yeah, it's... I don't know how to say this. I like Destiny's gameplay. Couldn't tell you anything about the story ever. I remember Cade 6 dying and that being a big deal and that being a big showcase moment where it's like, oh shit, he died in the middle of this fucking trailer in the middle of this PlayStation conference. Like, what the fuck? And now he's back and it just feels like, all right, why'd y'all kill him? Why, why'd y'all kill him if it's not going to be a permanent thing? Like... Because that was, like, the main character everyone liked and knew. Like, that was like, oh, we killed Kratos, which I haven't beat Ragnarok yet. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not yet. But, you know, it feels like that. You're taking the mascot out. And now they're bringing him back, and it's like, were y'all out of mascots? Especially because the only other mascot y'all had, God bless him, Lance Reddick is gone now. So, yeah, like, unfortunate. Th that character's in limbo now, so... I don't know. It's just very weird that they brought him back. I'm sure there's a story reason for it. I just don't pay attention to the lore like that to know. Um, and also, I was just annoyed that Destiny was during the showcase at all. Like, I don't want to see games that I already know about. I already saw RE4. I already saw Destiny. I already saw all these games I know about. Give me something new. Emmett, I'm there with you. We passed that a long time ago with how I thought mm -hmm. this showcase was going. Like I said, we already passed that. I already was this like, was the this, is not, this is not what I thought. This was. This is like... At that point, I was just watching and letting it letting it happen. I, I was no longer excited. Like once we hit those three games, like I said prior, my my, I was just like, this isn't what I thought. This is not going to be as good as I thought. Let's see what this is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this was pretty much like the peak of like the max frustration I hit, where I'm like, why the fuck are you showing me Destiny? It was this, and then the movie trailer. Those oh were the God. two hype moments. I, of I like, could not oh, believe the they put it. I was like, we're literally like. What is this? What is this? Anyways, um, I'm excited. There, uh, just to answer a quick question, yeah, there is no lore reason for this to happen. We do not know. We're going in dark, which is very fun. The downside of what's funny is the downside of Destiny 2 being a live service and them having to market expansions does mm. actually, in theory, make the game worse because they're probably going to have to give a reason why this is happening. And now in the live game that we're playing, we have to wait until our characters figure that out. There was a similar issue with the witch queen where we played the witch queen and the entire time there's little things of like, Oh, Savathun might appear. Savathun might appear. And then the witch queen shows and it's like, Oh yeah, Savathun's going to be the main guy. Uh, you're going to go to her very soon. Uh, and uh, there's the mystery. It's all gone now. It's like, okay, well um, <laughs> that kind of ruins it, but cool, I guess. Yeah. And we'll, I assume we'll be in a similar situation with the final shape. We'll probably know way too much. And then we'll have to wait in the in-game universe of Destiny 2 for people to figure out what us as players already know because we've been marketed to for an hour and a half. Yep, yep. Time will tell. Concord. Firewalk Studios coming 2024. This tells me saw something they wanted. I don't know what this is. They saw it's something like, and bought the studio. So I have to mm. trust that they saw something in this. And also, I'm sick. Like, I like space games. I'm sick of every new game being a space game. Like, it seems like that's the vibe right now. It used to be, oh, everything's fantasy. Now everything's space. And I like space. I prefer sci-fi over fantasy. But good Lord, I'm going to fucking explode <laughs> if I get another one. <laughs> like yeah, i don't know I what concord is going to be but whatever i i get it it does seem like space is the playground to for people to be like oh it's in space you know oh mystery and stuff uh to quickly uh say from the playstation blog uh concord is our new pvp multiplayer first person shooter coming to ps5 ps sorry ps5 and pc in 2024 while we're still hard on work development they wanted to share a small intro of course that's the trailer that they showed Concord is the bringing together of peoples 
it's the power of games to build connection and inspire social play. The Firewalk team is driven by this type of exc- yeah. Uh, this is gonna be nonsense. I'm not reading this. This is it's just pomp and circumstance. We still don't know anything about this game. Now, to be fair, I don't blame PlayStation for immediately jumping on a first person shooter. It is something they have sorely missed and that they have not had in a Haven't very had one since very very long time. Killzone Shadowfall. We have to go all the way back to PS4 launch. To, mm-hmm. to have them have a first person shooter of any uh, any consequence even in uh, the smallest way of being exclusive yeah we'll it, see. It, because this is a I, we'll see about it. it it could be fun it could be interesting some of my favorite shooters are space based look at doom look at titanfall 2 like it's not that i hate space it's just i'm a little sick of it um we'll see about this game it's supposed to be a live service game i believe so if it is live service that already there's already a ceiling of how much i'm going to love this game yeah. But if it has a campaign, a campaign with that vibe might do something because we don't get too many space campaigns lately. Um, so that I might not be tired of, but just the general space aesthetic, fighting people in multiplayer, I'm good. I'm good. We'll see. Gran Turismo. I I literally just wrote Gran Turismo because I was bored to tears. Uh, do you have anything? I have nothing. Shout out to fuck. I, I'm gonna say his name wrong. Digimon Hutsu. Um, shout out to him still getting uh, big ticket roles because I know Hollywood was running him through the dirt for a minute. But hopefully he's back on it because I think he he is good. He was in he he does good work. I think he should be get he should be getting more work. So that's all I gotta say on that. Everything else is a movie about cars. I'm not gonna watch it. <laughs> Two new pieces of hardware: the earbuds <clears throat> called Project Nomad and a remote play device called Project Q. We knew nothing else about this. We saw what the Nomad looks like. We saw what the Project Q looks like. We knew about all this. It all leaked. I mean, I have nothing. This Project Nomad looks cool. I'll say that. If you don't have really? AirPods or like any other earbud, I guess you go for that. And then we I- have the Project Q, which at the end of the day, they cut a dual sense in half and put it on the sides of a screen, which Honestly, we've been kind of wanting that for a long time and no one's ever done it. So we're going to see if Who's we, actually... we wait, <laughs> you don't think you've never wanted. So I, I immediately think of the switch or the Vita. Mm-hmm. How much better do those feels if they had the controller grips? You don't think they'd feel hey, like you, you're holding okay. kind of a slab. So like your absolutely... controller grip would feel better. So maybe I'm being a little too literal in what I mean, but we've kind of always wanted a controller with triggers on a thing and we're getting it. So we're going to see if we like that or not. You are correct in that. I'm more talking about like, I didn't, no one wanted this device specifically. Okay. Yes. That form factor. Yes. But the okay. device itself, God, no, sorry. I, I yes, I, I probably screwed some wires there. I don't honestly <laughs> know why they're making this. If I'm, if I'm being mm. clear, who is this for? I don't know. Uh, We'll have to see. People are excited. Specifically because they hope this makes remote play better. And I, I'm tech dumb, so I, I'm not sitting here saying I know. But is that even possible? I don't think anything going in this will make remote play better. Because that's all on the system and the internet connection to do that. It's not necessarily the device, really. And if it does do that, it needs to be expensive. And people said they don't want to pay a lot of money for this. So which is it? Do you want it to be better or do you want it to be cheap? Because you can't. Well, have both. here's the thing: it's it's so narrowly focused on making the remote play experience better to the chagrin of anything else that that feature is only so valuable to people. <laughs> like, if this thing costs over, I said if it costs over a hundred, I don't care. Oh but no, you're other, cra- It is over. I, I know I'm crazy. Oh, I know okay, I'm okay. crazy for that. It's just that's the value proposition for me I because see what you're I can I, see I can remote. I have been remote playing on Steam Deck the last couple nights flawlessly. No issues in God okay, of War Ragnarok. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't need it. I no, don't need don't. it. So that's no. the value proposition for me. Everyone else is saying 200 is the sweet spot. We already have the Logitech G Cloud. Logitech G Cloud is 350. 350, yeah. It's too much already. And they're trying to slash that price down to make it into 200 range for people. And we already don't want that. So what makes you think the PlayStation version of this is going to be anything better? Now, I will say... Side note real quick for the earbuds. Apparently, they're supposed to have Bluetooth and audio from the game at the same time in the in the buds, kind of like the Steel Series headsets do. That's actually cool. That way you can talk on Discord on your phone so, while playing the game. 
I will that's say, neat. I sh- I did, I should have looked that up. I did mm-hmm. assume that it did that. I should and I shouldn't have done that. I guess, mm-hmm. but that's like come like commonplace. So I would hope it's, it would. It's if getting it more common. Yeah, if, but if it did, at the same that, time, that yeah, would have been go ahead, go ahead. pretty silly. But thank God they yeah. are doing. Yeah, they are doing it. So, you know, it makes sense. That seems like a more or less standard feature for a lot of these headsets now. It's yeah. just, I'm not walking out the house with gamer buds. No, <laughs> you, I, I'm not you either. You can't pay me. I'm you can't pay either. me to wear these over-designed skin flap things. Like, yeah. I'm not I'm not doing that. Um, and I'm sure those will be like 250 by themselves, just the buds. So, you know, you, you get all these peripherals. And really, this segment is what made me think, oh, so PlayStation's really, like, just full-throatedly trying to be the apple of gaming oh they're trying to make these peripherals yeah and i know i we saw it coming we saw it from the ps5 reveal on forward but like they're just trying to be like we are the sleekiest sleekest sexiest we are the premium products we are the high-end things but they're gonna learn pretty quick exactly like oh everything's gonna get you're gonna get your your dirt grease on it and it's all gonna be dark anyway but they're gonna learn pretty quickly especially with this project q they have this thing you can already do it on your phone. And if you want to do it on your phone in a nicer way, pay just a hundred dollars for the for the backbone or the razor key sheet or any of these controllers. I just yeah, and it, why do I why do I need a different device? I have a phone. Why do I need mm-hmm. this? I don't under, I really don't who is this for? Is this like for I mean I I I'm I was gonna make a hypothetical. I really don't know who this is for. I, I saw people who it's saying, for? I saw people saying mm-hmm. like, "Hey, we want a good remote play that makes it better," but that I don't think we're looking in the right place for this. This the, thing he, isn't making remote play mm-hmm. better. What they should do here's what they should do: they should just make an official app on Linux so that that's a flawless experience, and you don't have to go through Chai Kai and all that stuff to get it running on Steam Deck because that's pretty much perfect. Like what I have set up now is perfect. You can make it easier to set up, but that's the only qualm I have. Um. And then outside of that, you could just make it easier to do on phones. You could just ramp it up to where it's easier to do in a place you can already do it. There's no profit in that for Sony. So they said, we're going to make this bespoke device to get that one feature better. And it just shows that they want to get in on that Switch. They want to get on that Steam Deck type of uh, market. But they're afraid to commit to making a full handheld device that is playing games natively. They don't want to commit to that. And because they don't want to commit, this thing's going to have very limited utility, very limited market in general, and they will stop making it after a couple of years because this is a peripheral. This is a super expensive peripheral to the PlayStation 5. This is yep. not its own thing. And so it's not going to do the numbers that Steam Deck or Switch are doing. And it just it just frustrates me to all in because with Vita, they, they must have really got fucked up on the Vita because they are scared off of doing anything like that. And we're at the point with graphics on mobile handhelds now you can make a device that plays PS4 games. You could almost certainly do that and have it run well and have it, you know, be under 500. I feel like that's easy to do, but they don't want to do it and they're just too afraid of it. Maybe maybe this will bomb. Actually no. I think the real thing is if this thing did successful then maybe they'll look at making a, a premium handheld that plays games natively. But I think this is going to bomb because it is not that. Because they should be making something that's dedicated handheld. That's what people actually want from them, and they're not going to do it. So I don't know. Yeah. It frustrates me. The Q, the Project Q just frustrates me to all hell. It does, because it's a half step. Mm-hmm. Who, again, who is this for? If this had just a bit more power, maybe I would be across like, yeah, maybe it can help play games through it. Because I don't. we don't need a literal Switch. We just want to play the games on the go. Right. It would be cool. This thing would be way better if it was. I mean, I'd pay 400 bucks for a Vita, to, a Vita. Everyone says Vita 2, a new PlayStation hardware, premium handheld. It does not have to have exclusive games. It just has to play PlayStation 5 games. And I'm fine with it remote playing. But let it, me be able to play it on the go with some power that actually aids in the remote play feature. I really do not think this thing is coming out and making remote play any better if you can do it on your phone you're there's a high likelihood this thing is not as strong as your new iphone oh yeah definitely not like definitely not even not. a percentage so how would it be better <laughs> so what's the mm-hmm. point it's it's i mean sure the ergonomics of the dual shot 5 is fine but of you course. could just bluetooth the controller to your phone and get a clip for the screen like there's Maybe. so many ways to get around this so it it just seems like it's an antiquated piece of tech and 
it seems like the way forward should be, hey, PS4 is old. You can put that type of hardware into a small device and sell it for 400 I think you could easily do that. And then just every generation, PlayStation 6 is out. All right, here's your PS5 handheld that can stream PS6 games. And then so on and so forth. Go forward with that. That seems like the best way to do it. They're too afraid to do it. Nope. So, yeah, we're, we're screwed until, honestly, until Jim Ryan dies. <laughs> we're here <laughs> oh my god that I sounded heard, very harsh but that's no, where no, i'm it's, at it's funny you're joking uh, uh jim ryan i did not put this in the notes because it wasn't relevant but jim ryan did appear which i actually am kind of surprised about he did not seem like a face so i did not think he would appear in any of this i did he think only we would... shows when it's a big deal or when and he's it, trying to make it a big deal yeah and it was to be fair so i i get it but it was it surprised me but it is welcome i i do appreciate him being there even though we all know he doesn't play video games and probably doesn't understand them in the way that we do uh he mm-hmm. knows the business stuff he does not get probably the creativity about it and all these things but i appreciate i appreciate him there it was cool but i have you know i just quickly to add that next up we have the closer spider-man 2 of course by insomniac mm-hmm. games comes out fall no yeah. date crazy no date. date that shows me insomniac mm-hmm. is not positive they do not know if they can hit uh september yet so they are not saying it that was the rumored date was september uh yeah just it was just september there was they were just mm-hmm. they're looking at a september date they are not confident they're hitting that so they are not announcing it because they probably don't want to delay it which makes sense i appreciate that uh they showed off a number of things this was a pretty lengthy look at the game it was pretty much 10 minutes of the game with a cinematic trailer to uh start it it was craven hunting some dude that they captured so he could hunt him and then he was mad mm-hmm. that he he wasn't good and he's been wanting better things so uh one of his henchmen shows hey you know maybe a new ground will work and it shows all the people that will probably see black cat spider-man uh, of course miles and and then it cuts to them pretty much showing off the, the symbiote suit which is pretty mm-hmm. cool. I didn't expect that, if I'm being honest. I thought we would get hints at it, but they very much wanted you to be like, this is different from Spider-Man 1. They showed, of course, the wingsuits, which were very cool, and they showed off the Venom symbiote and you being able to switch between Spider-Man and Miles. I saw people saying at will. I don't think it's at will. I think you just hit a button at certain points, you'll switch to Miles. I hope that's Miles what it is. In that specific thing, there will not be... Oh, you can play this mission as Spider-Man or Miles. I really don't think it'll be. You, you'll probably be able to switch them in the uh, open world, most likely at the end of the game, similar to a Batman Arkham situation, specifically in Arkham City. And in the actual story, there'll be set pieces where it's like, you can switch to Miles. But Miles looks awesome. He Kamehameha the kid. That was awesome. That was so cool. Yeah. it. I, I'll say I was really shocked that they started with the symbiote suit. That just seems like something you want to... You want to you save that for the game. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it, and also it was a shock that it's like, oh, no, the, the personality is already changing. Like, it seems like it's going to be, I think they all knew that that's what we were going towards. They knew that moment was going to happen. So they said, let's just show it in the marketing and have the intrigue be how did we get to that point? Because we all know how the first game ended. Like, how the, the symbiote was introduced, but it wasn't with Peter yet. So now yeah. the first couple hours will be how does the symbiote get to Peter? And then the rest of the game is how does the symbiote change Peter? How does Miles get into this? Because is this going to be a fucking, uh, what is it? Is this going to be like Soul, where it's body swap comedy, where it's like, oh, fuck, now I got the symbiote. <laughs> and now Miles is running around here all pissed, and they let him say the word. Um, so <laughs> They let him say the word. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> that would oh be awesome. Oh, my God. I'll be clapping oh, on God. my screen if they do. Very quickly, we, uh, we are opening the gates to Spider-Man spoilers just in case. No guarantee we'll be spoiling it, but I don't mm-hmm. want the flack just in case we do. Uh, Spider-Man 2, I I was mixed on how they showed it because they just showed 10 minutes of the game. So I'm like, we didn't yeah. have a different way of doing this. And also they showed the symbiotes, which I'm like, I'm with you. I thought I'd be kind of alone in this. I don't want to see that. I want to play it. I don't yeah. want to see it's- the symbiote. Why am I being spoiled on these things? I will say I did feel that it's like I don't want to see this. I want to save it for the game, but because they're showing it, they must have bigger things in store for us. That's a good. Point. That's the only thing. That is so. A good like, point. if you're gonna show, yeah, if you're gonna show the things that I was expecting, then you must be about to blow my mind with the full game. Very quick spoiler. So I am about to spoil a bit of Spider-Man. Give you mm-hmm. a second. Timestamps below, and so 
they were able to keep Doc Ock under wraps the entire time with Spider-Man 1. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like you said, there's something similar there with this. Yeah. Because they did they did show a lot in Spider-Man 1 when you really think about it. They kind of showed the biggest deal in the game in one of the first trailers when he gets beaten by Sinister Six. That's like a very pivotal moment. And they just kind of ruined it in the trailer. Well, so- it, it wasn't that he got beat up by Sinister Six. It was five. And no one knew what the six one was. Right. So they showed all the other ones. And then it's like, oh, it is Sinister Six. It's yeah. just people thought, oh, it's just all these rogues are just going to be the random with, people in the world. I'm with you. But that was a bit when I got to that moment. That's like two thirds of the game. So it's weird mm-hmm. that we saw that is what I, is what. I yes. Mean. But uh, uh, going back to the, the, the thing, I, I trust that they'll do something similar with this. So what is that? I, I'm kind of with you with if they did show this, this almost kind of gets me more excited a little bit because. Maybe they're holding something closer to the vest, and if they're not, uh, this was a terrible showing, if I'm being honest, because they didn't have to mm-hmm. show anywhere near this much. And also, I got to be honest, um, someone uh, I know, Cameron Kennedy, said this as well. I kind of agree with him. Him acting mean it didn't really kind of work. I hope he gets a little meaner, because it sounds like a very nice man pretending to be a mean guy. Yeah. Like, like when it ends with... with uh, the he's gonna go chase the lizard and he's like like oh he's like miles is like hey be careful he's got big teeth and he's like so do i and he like the whips and goes away i'm like Ugh. <laughs> like what what who who, who said yeah that? who says that it's why all, do you say that but, it's corny but i guess that's spider-man to be fair Spider-Man's we gotta think corny. about what type of writing team does insomniac games have <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the thing i want to think about first they haven't done gritty since resistance 3 and that's more than that de- that's like a decade ago at this point yeah they do still have a lot of those people not a lot but like a bit of them but mm-hmm. i will say they did do people kind of give them flack for like being semi-safe with things i don't know they spoilers better man one mm-hmm. and they did kill aunt may that's a pretty big deal people kind of overlook that true that's and miles is dead in front of them and yeah, in front of him in a very 9-11 esque way, by the way. That was clearly mm-hmm. trying to evoke a 9-11. I mean, Jesus, it was in New York of all things with dust yep. everywhere. Like it was clearly evoking that. So I mean, I feel like people and maybe that's on them because they didn't make it real enough, but to me that was all pretty heinous stuff. Where like they mm-hmm. kill him in front of him very grossly in this very 9-11 esque way, and then we go to um, Spider Man, where he is forced to not save his 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 aunt, he's forced yeah. to, to to not save her. Watch he her has die. the cure in his hand. He can save her. He has the ability, and he knows he shouldn't. God, that scene gets yeah. me every time. And also, yeah, again, another thing one. that we bring up again, mm-hmm. uh, you do so many shows, you probably don't remember this. One of the shows that you were on as well want to say you were on this one i theorized what a next spider-man game could be um since miles has been such a pivotal character i could see a marrying of that scene but with miles and peter i was just thinking that i was just thinking that because like that because they they make the symbiote suit seem like such a big deal like now you can parry because of the symbiote suit instead of just dodging out of the way mm-hmm. um there's a bunch of new combat abilities there's, there's a whole nother wheel just for symbiote abilities now so it's like they're really going in on the symbiote which makes me think all these theories about oh halfway through the game the symbiote gets transferred blah 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 that doesn't make too much sense if you're building up a whole symbiote tree with one character so maybe it really is just peter has it the whole game until the end of the game where you know it's it's miles v peter and then spider-man 3 is just miles's face only yep (laughs) like that that is a possibility and i've theorized that since we got them i think i don't when was that i think that's when they showed off yeah that's when they showed off miles in the playstation showcase 2020 Mm, that's for miles morales yeah that that should be right 2020 miles morales they show that, and I started theorizing that. I, I think that's a possibility. I, uh, maybe they don't kill off Peter, but, I mean, they have a lot of Spider-Man. And they're clearly I mean, they like not to be interested bold. in co-op. They're clearly not interested yeah. in co-op. They said that now. This game is not co-op. Everyone, I people act like it now. People would have bet money this would have been co-op. It's not co-op. It just made meaning too much sense. It did. I was right there with everybody else. I was like, this is co-op. This, I mean, it is co-op. They would not have mm-hmm. started the first trailer with both of them together like that and they did just 
they did that anyways. So <laughs> so it's not co-op. It's not happening. And if they're clearly not interested in co-op, then you don't need both of them. Yeah. And also it becomes I, a problem ooh. with games when you have two of the very strong characters so close together. That's why they got rid of Peter in the entirety of Miles. Yeah. They, have, yeah, they need a reason that they true. can't help each other every time. It's the super. But I could very... Ooh. I could so easily see because there's already a little bit of a discourse of people being like, I get really annoyed when Spider-Man and Spider-Man are together, but one is called Spider-Man, the other is called Miles Morales. It like just mm. thick, it's like a rock in the shoe. It's just a little bit annoying. That would be such a bold thing. The proper Spider-Man three is just Miles. It's that just would be Miles. so fucking insane. That'd I would love sick. it. I would love it. I would too. It's different. I like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see. Time will tell. Hmm. that's the showcase um any closing thoughts that you want to leave this i pretty much said what i had to say i don't think i have anything really to add yeah i, I don't have too much else to add um spider-man was great that's one thing i've been talking all this shit on the showcase i haven't tweeted once about spider-man 2 spider-man 2 looks great i love it it looks, it looks awesome i'm gonna play it for several hours i'm gonna probably platinum it and all that good shit it looks amazing but yeah they they had to show more they had to show more you are playstation you have too many good titles to just let them sit in the back corner languishing away um maybe there's some difficulties behind the scenes that we don't know about maybe there's a reason it's taking so long if that's the case then i really feel bad about pressuring folks but from the timelines we're used to we should be seeing some stuff uh, maybe we'll get another playstation showcase later in the year that's been a theory from some folks that seems like too much to me because it took so long for this one i don't think it but um yeah, I don't think so. So I don't know. Maybe Summer Games Fest can give us some good food because I'm feeling pretty famished right now. This was called the PlayStation Showcase 2023 on their official video. Mm -hmm. It is not called Part One. <laughs> so yeah, I do not. It's think not we... said June 2023 or now, May. So. If this now becomes the standard every year thing, I am less upset if, if I'm being honest. If mm. but if they and I really don't think this is possible. If they do go in another 18 months without showing one, that is. This was inexcusably bad. I don't think mm -hmm. that's possible. I really don't. I do not think we go another year and a half to two years without one. Because if that happens, that is like, what is going on? What's going on over there? Something's bad. So I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe they like stay at a place more. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they'll go to stay. I'm thinking they go to stay to place permanently until they have PlayStation 6 to talk about. Ooh. I think they wait that long to be like, we're not we're not even going to let you think we have a big thing, because at that point, you know, PlayStation 6 is a big deal. You know, people need to know about it. You know, all the information that's going to be a big deal, no matter what games are next to it, rather than, hey, we have a bunch of games, but we're PlayStation. We have a new guard that doesn't really understand games that much. So we just have a bunch of popular IP that we think people are going to like without thinking, oh, wait, you need a Last of Us. You need a Ghost of Tsushima. I really think that's what happened. Whoever's in the marketing or whatever said, hey, we got a lot of big IPs. We got Metal Gear. We got all these things. This is showcase worthy. We have an hour long show. This is showcase worthy. Without thinking, showcase means very specific things, not just big IP. It means these IP. <laughs> I will so. say, even you even said like big IP. I would say half of this is not relevant to a showcase. And again, no disparage to these games, but. There's a lot of games where I'm like, this is a great state of play game. Why is this here? Why? Mm -hmm. you, yeah. Your PlayStation, you are the biggest right now. Your your name draws people. Why are we seeing some of the... No offense, Talos Principle 2. Like, what's going on? <laughs> what, what, what is happening? So yeah. that, that is something I, I will close with. Why did this feel like they need to happen? And why did they have half of it filler? The other half... Or why was... A fourth of it filler, a fourth of it CGI trailers, a f uh, some of it's dedicated to like some peripherals and Gran Turismo for some reason, and then a couple actually really, really good stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Very strange. We digress. But, hey. Oh, and, and, and my hey, uh, Xbox, you, they, le they, le they left it open. Will Xbox has you to deliver? Do, all they have to do is the bare minimum and we're, they're good. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they actually have to do pretty good for it to seem better in comparison. Because this is still I mean, good. Yeah. We will remember this fondly. I think hindsight will kind of go away and we'll be like, yeah, it was pretty good. So this mm. that has to actually be great, I think, for it to really be like, oh, you know, and they'll they'll finally win one. Again, as an Xbox well, fan, they Xbox will finally get a win in this generation. 
Well, I'll say two things. Number one, we got about 18 minutes left, just so we know. Yep. Um, right. And number two, um, I think for Xbox, they're in a similar position to Sony right now, where Starfield is their Spider-Man. That is the big game everyone knows about. We know it's coming. You just need to show a big, full-featured 60 frames per second gameplay, hopefully look at it. That's what they need to do for that game. And then they have the Hellblades. They have the Fables. They have the Everwilds. Or is it Everwilds? I forget yeah, what it's, it's called. Yeah, it's Everwilds. Uh, you, okay, it's it is by Rare. No one knows what it is. Exactly. Don't, we, I don't think they do either. Exactly. So we need to know what all those guys are doing. Maybe some of the Bethesda studios as well. Maybe, uh, what is it? Maybe Double Fine. Let's see what they've been doing. Because what, uh, Psychonauts is almost two years old at this point. Maybe you can show a CGI trailer for that. They have a lot of questions that need to be answered. And even some games that were at their last showcase that didn't come out within the year. So give us an update or a date on some of those. Like, what's that Axe game that looked like God of War at home? Like, oh. I forget what it is with the black woman. Flintlock. I yes. want to see more Flintlock. Flintlock yeah. looks really cool. Um, so they have a lot Indiana of questions Jones. as well. Indiana Jones. Holy They have fuck. a lot. They have a yes, lot to they... show. Will it be ready mm -hmm. is the question. I think more of it has to be ready than PlayStation had. Because PlayStation only had one big thing ready and then a couple small morsels. And so and we left hungry. Were, and none of them are ready, yeah. Not, and exactly. all the things they were showing, they clearly aren't ready to actually show anything, but they mm -hmm. had to make the CGI trailer. Exactly. So Xbox needs to have some of those. Give me give me State of Decay 3 gameplay. Give me oh Gear 6 Fine. reveal trailer. Give me Gear something. Gear 6 might not happen. Gears, I, I don't think Coalition's working on Gear 6. I think Coalition's doing something else, but show me what it is. If, if That's all I want. If the rumor is true, they were working on a new IP, and it got canceled for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. If that is true, and then they moved on to Gear 6. So if mm -hmm. that rumor is true, Gear 6 has only been in development for, I think, a year and a half or two years, something like that. That's if only it's if close that's to two years, if it's close to two years, you can give us a trailer and say yeah, next you year. You could. Probably wouldn't come out next year, but yeah, I agree. Uh... Mm -hmm. Since you have so little time, we're gonna skip the actual regular show because that went on pretty long. So we're just gonna that have was the, the show. <laughs> yeah, that that was the show. We're just gonna have to do the showcase, and we're gonna going to end the show with what have you been playing? Which is, of course, a little bit of a different show this week. We 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 usually start that, and we usually kind of have the not so rapid fire, but we're doing something different this week. So we're just doing Emmett. What have mm -hmm. you been playing? What have I been playing? That is a great question. Oh wow, my. <laughs> my exophasia stuff they did to really tell of myself. The first thing on here is Ages of Mayhem, which I did play for like 20 minutes last night. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I was just in the mood. Um, that's but like, I've been... It's like finding porn at your age right now, <laughs> like in your room. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's absolutely accurate. Um, like everyone else in the fucking world, I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Um, GameStop had a really great deal on it. Uh, trade in two games, you get it for 20 bucks. Then I had extra coupons, got it for 12 bucks. So very happy nice. to take advantage of that. I've put about seven hours into it. I got through the tutorial island. Then I found out, oh, wait, if you don't have all the abilities on the wheel, you haven't finished the tutorial. So now I got to find out where the fuck the other tutorial is to it's keep getting those powers. Um, is it that cavern right as soon as you drop down? Uh, slight spoilers. I'm going to tell him where to find it. Three, two, one, timestamps below. Um, so to actually fill out the wheel, you have to do one side quest before the side quest actually gets stuff happens. So you do, um, what's her name? Pura? Is her name Pura? Yeah. The little one? The short one. Oh, the short one with the goggles. Yeah. Nah, yes. I forget their name though. So they're making a mosaic map thing. If you go over mm -hmm. there, if, she, if that's done, you need to go where that is to trigger the quest with the old guy because the old guy goes to his lab so so then uh -huh. you go to him and then you'll he'll be like yeah i need this stuff to be able to enhance your pure pet thing mm, okay okay and then you'll be so, yeah pretty much done I, I i saw that uh tweet where it's like oh you're not done I'm like mm, it's not they're not that big a deal the things that you get aren't like huge i would say one is i don't want to spoil it for you but even I, if you I think don't i've seen have, gameplay of it you probably have uh does it start with a uh i don't know if it starts with a the thing i'm thinking of is like a thing that lets you favorite things and you yes. recall them so yeah it's yes that. yeah it's called yes, auto. Yes. it's pretty much auto build so you, you yeah. pretty much save builds that you make and you can hit a button and they auto create and you don't even have to have the materials which is nice um mm. but i would say that's pretty good but 
it's you know that isn't like a necessity because you could just make this stuff yourself but you could definitely do that it, it does feel better when you have everything and then if you want you can take pictures of things and save it for the compendium yeah uh, yeah. I've also been playing Tears of the Kingdom. I, I want to hear though what you think of it before I sit down. I'll say so. The context is Breath of the Wild. I played it. I played it for like twenty or thirty hours. I played it for quite a bit of time. Uh, actually, you can scroll down. I played it for about twenty-two hours. I'm sorry, so I put some time Tears into of the it. Kingdom or Breath of the Wild? This is Breath of the Wild. I haven't played Tears okay. of the Kingdom more than eight hours. Okay. Um. So I'm very curious. early. But for Breath of the Wild, I put a large chunk of time into it. And I say that so I can be justified in my critiques because I thought that game was a 7 out of 10 for me. It felt like someone at Nintendo played Far Cry 3 for the first time and said, let's do that, but different. Because everyone's like, oh, this is a brand new Breath of Fresh Air for Zel for open world games. This is a super duper innovation. I played it and it's like, it's just Far Cry 3, but you took out all the map markers. Like, that's all it is. And there's still towers. There's still little areas where you got a bunch of enemies in a in an enemy camp. And it's like, all right, it's it's fine. It's cool. I think y'all are just excited because Zelda's doing it. That's what it felt like. Cause I I I've I've been of that type of thought for a long time just because I'm a PlayStation fan. So whenever I see Nintendo do the thing that every other game has been doing for the last five years, it's like y'all, y'all just like it because they're doing it now. <laughs> I don't necessarily see what's different. I will say, Tears of the Kingdom, something is different. Something is different here where it is so free form. It does feel like the open world version of an immersive sim where like prey with the little foam gun that you could use to just sequence break the game low key. It seems like all of Tears of the Kingdom is like that. You have these tools that are so versatile. You can just do so many things. Even on this tutorial island, I was getting over obstacles in ways that felt like I was cheating the system and it feels very satisfying. And on top of that, exploration seems to be a little bit more streamlined in ways where I like it, where the map isn't full of icons, but as soon as you find something, the icon's on the map. And now it's something that I can go back to and recall. And that's not something I remember being in Breath of the Wild. So it seems like they're modernizing it to be more in the lines of the type of open world games I like, and also the way in which you're traversing it and solving the problems are a lot more freeform, are a lot more creative, and I'm digging it a lot more. So that's how I feel about it in general. What are your thoughts about it? It's funny how almost we're going to be marrying each other in our discussion. So Breath of the Wild, let's start with that. Uh, I actually played it more than you, I believe. I fully beat the game, and I did um, all of the memory things. I want to say 40, maybe. I might be around 30, though. So I don't want to mm -hmm. pretend like I know more. I probably don't. I played that game originally and went, this is the game that we're freaking out about? This is the 10 mm -hmm. out of 10. This is the best game ever made. I don't, uh, it's funny is I'm finding more and more people thinking this. Um, because I was actually on Penultimate Conquest a little bit ago to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. We actually opened with this quick discussion because Tears of the Kingdom came out that day, or reviews of the, of the game came out that day. And they were like, yeah, it's apparently the best game ever made because it's like the highest rated thing. And I was joking like, yeah, you know, it's just like Breath of the Wild being the best game ever made. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they agreed with me. I was definitely expecting blowback because pretty much everyone I listen to on pretty much anything says... Breath of the Wild is some magical thing that changed the game for everyone. And I pretty much echo your thought. I don't understand where that comes from. Far Cry 3, it, the, the, um, the analogy you made is aptly made, in my opinion. They weren't doing anything new because I played games uh, that did everything they just did. The only difference, like you said, was there aren't map markers. They're the pretty mm -hmm. much the same thing. There's Korok seeds everywhere that up your inventory. They are so many that it's like. There's two camps of thought. There's too many because like, why would you ever want to get them all? But also there's the second camp where it's you're not supposed to get them all. That's why they're everywhere. So I understand from a game point of view that you can't really mirror those two because you want people to have an extra inventory size, but you also want them to be easy to find. So the only way to be easy to find is to like make them. That. I don't know. We're argue semantics anyways. Breath of the Wild to me was never that revolutionary game. I never really understood why. When I played it, I was like, this is a great game. This is not even probably top five Zelda games, in my opinion. So I don't really understand where it even is. It might be top, it might be the fifth. That that's how it would be top five. Uh Link to the Past blows this thing out of the water uh at yeah. any day. So I really never understood the appeal, never got it. I was always that way. Listen to any show where I talked about it. Always had that opinion. Tears of the Kingdom, however. 
they figured it out. Something about mm-hmm. this game, I think it's the pa- I think it's everything all at once. Shout out to the movie. Hey, good movie. It's the powers. It's the different traversals. I don't really care it's the same map because you kind of see what's different now. There's been an mm-hmm. evolution, there's little things that's happened. There's no offense, actual story in this game. Uh, where as Breath of the Wild had these memories that you watched and you're like, oh, there's kind of a story because a hundred years ago this war happened and they lost and now it was Link's here to save it. Breath of the Wild story was sure. basically Horizon Zero Dawn's story, Thank but you. less interesting. It's way less interesting. <laughs> it's literally breath it's literally Horizon, except it's worse. And mm-hmm. and it's all building up to you saving Zelda, and she looks the exact same she did a hundred years ago. <laughs> cool whatever we're very scared of maybe she's born with it maybe it's maybelline maybe it's (laughs) maybe but with tears of the kingdom they really did kind of nail and i finally feel like everyone else feels i never jived with brother wild ever not a single opinion on the gamer verse of twitter i ever jived with everyone thought it's this revolution i remember people saying like oh my god so many um games are going to try and do this and i'm like no and also no offense i feel like i'm the more right one in that there aren't that many breath of wild things out there there are more ubisoft Mm. open worlds i would say they take way more inspiration than ubisoft there aren't that many games that just let you go explore and they don't tell you yeah they almost tell you too much half these damn games so i uh, Mm -hmm. i I feel honestly slightly more validated than all the people saying like breath of wild is going to change the game design of how games are made. I'm like, are they? It doesn't look like they did at all. It looks like they're still it's... doing the Ubisoft thing if they're doing mm-hmm. that. And if not, they're doing the PlayStation thing. So it's like, where's Breath exactly. of the Wild in that? So Tears of the Kingdom, though, really does do a very special thing. And it's like you said, you feel like you're breaking the game design, but you're not because you're allowed to break the game design. And that's something brilliant and something that's never really been explored in many things there's a couple things you can bring up but there's not that many things that you can really say that really encourage you to break the game design and they're almost and they reward you for it most games would say you doing half the things i've done in breath of the wild as me manipulating it but this says you're doing it all things correctly because you can do it in the game and that's something brilliant Mm -hmm. that that is very nintendo and very some that is something i can see as being a revolutionary thing that hey, we're not going to be upset that you figured out this shrine in a unique way because we want you to. We gave you these tools to explore them and really use them to your best of your abilities. And when you do, you get a creative way of solving this puzzle that you had to grind on rails and you got to have a ball, almost like a pinball, like go down these rails and, and hit this like specific marker on the map and you can build something around it uh, there was one where I made a skateboard and grinded around rails to like go mm. through a puzzle. Like yeah. there's just little things like that where it's like, this is something really, really cool. And I very, very much think this game is something very special. And I think a lot of people should actually give this a shot. I am finally with you uh, and with everyone else. This is the game. This is the revolution. This is the thing that really marries everything together. This is the good one. Breath of the Wild walked, so it is the king of a run. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I agree. That I agree with that sentiment full heartedly. And it's one of those things where, like, why did we even, I, why did we even think of Breath of the Wild as being this big, crazy new revolution? Because it feels like, man, that know. wasn't doing any. Sincerely, Breath of the Wild did not feel like it was doing that much new. It felt like it was the Nintendification of ideas that already existed. Yes. Where this seems like. Yes, if you want to get right down to it, Tears of the Kingdom is doing a lot of other things. Like, it's a lot of Gary's Mod in there. It's a lot of Prey, yeah. like I said, in yeah. there. It's a lot of other elements it's combining, but it feels like it's combining it in a new way where Breath of the Wild felt like, all right, you're just doing... You're doing a cover where this feels like a new song. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I, I'm yeah. right there with you. Breath of the Wild, great. Tears of the Kingdom is finally the one where I'm like, yes, this is the game that we're all talking about. This is the special thing. This has great story. Shockingly, this has a great yeah. story. If you go, and I, find I haven't it, you seen do, too much of it, but I'm excited to play more. You have to find it in a very similar way, the Breath of the Wild. But when you find mm-hmm. it, it's actually very compelling. It's a I little like strange because you can find it out of order. To me, that mm-hmm. enhanced the story. But I could see if you found it out of order, then the out of order that I found it, it could probably be not good. 
But I found a actually, and I didn't do it purposely. I just I found them and 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 did them. But the ways I found them colored it in just the right way where it was fun that I figured out like, oh, this happened. And then you find the thing that uh, happened and, and you're like, oh, yeah, that happened. And there's a theme mm-hmm. throughout the entire game that's very well done. Very well done. And once you know it, mm. it's awesome. And there's so- and they tell you that the moment you walk out the cave. And that is so mm. brilliant. And I won't spoil mm. you anything else. As okay. I want you to experience the game. When you do right. find it, I, I would like to implore you, please let me know when you find out what it is. You'll know when you find it. It will be very obvious oh, what I'm talking about because you'll remember what that is, what I just said. You'll mm. remember. It'll hit you like, oh, my God, that's what okay. you know, it'll hit you. So whenever you find that, let me know. I would love to have a discussion with you. Aside well, from that, I'm... Emmett, you have to go soon. So let's give, fi- you know, your final, you got two, you got, no, never mind, you got 60 seconds. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. All right. I will say I'm probably going to take a while before I find out what that is in Zelda because the thing I want to beat before I f- get to Zelda again, I want to finish God of War Ragnarok. I am deep into it. Uh, the 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 interface tells me I got 74% of the game through. Emmett. So I only have 30, less than 30. I got 26% left of this game. I have already beaten a god that was prophesized that Kratos would uh, yeah i've already done that i've already yeah, done that yeah. so like i think i'm very fucking close and yeah, so i'm excited i think i'm probably gonna beat it this weekend because like i said i get home from work grab the steam deck turn on the system and i'm just playing until i fall asleep and that's a good two three hours maybe even more on some night so we'll see i think i'm gonna get through it but um yeah i'm enjoying it i'm finally getting into a honeymoon period with god of war where i'm excited to get back i'm excited to rank up my character i'm excited to explore i'm excited to walk through this world and experience everything i'm finally setting into a honeymoon phase uh right towards the end of the game feels like things are popping off and it seems like some inevitable things are about to fucking happen and i'm very excited to see some of that very terrified to see the rest of it but i just don't know how it's all gonna happen and you know, but by, by the next time I come on this show, whenever that might be, I will have this game done. Hope Hopefully so. by the next time. Hopefully by the next time I do any of my spoonfuls or welcome to the things or players clubs, I'll have that done. So yeah, very excited about that. Um, I've played other games, but I'm not going to talk about them because I need to leave now. But oh, good. Uh, oh, good. Thank you very thank much you. for having me on. Hey, Amen. I appreciate you. Remember uh, VGU, uh, uh, Book to Thing, all these things. Go check them mm-hmm. out. Everything will be in the description as always. Of Emmett. course. And, you know, EJ Spun 61 on Twitter. Just follow me there. You'll see everything. Yep. Thank you so much, brother. And until the oh, next yeah. time, go Chief.